مسجد مدرسہ خند خند مسلح گنگنا وز خند لٹی پنکھا امنی سوخا دیکھائی بابی دلتا موسیقی रात्रो दिन के मामले जब बेइल्लाह आप सुसाये रे हाय मुझे केरो मुमसीदा गुनगुना नगाय बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह रब्बिल अल्लामीन वसलातु सलाम अला सईदना व नबीना मुहम्मद व अला आलिही व सहबी अज़माइन फ़ास्ट टू ऑल माय डियर रिसेक्ट ब्रदर्स या एंड एनी सिस्टर्स लिसनिंग we have gathered here today for a very uh, unique uh, topic. This is about uh, a very big wali of Allah, rahimahullah, who has passed away in Bangladesh, who was in recent times one of the greatest that Allah Azza wa Jal has given on the <coughs> land of Silet, uh, in Gorfur, in uh, Balagunj, in Gorfur. Uh, our great honorable Sheikh Nuruddin Gorfuri Rahmatullahi Alayhi who passed away. A lot of people know him as, the, as Gorfuri Huzur. A lot of people refer to him as that. What makes him very unique is that not only did he, uh, not only was he very close to Hadith and he taught Hadith and Bukhari all his life. Most, most of his life he taught Bukhari after he graduated Rahimahullah. Uh, but what makes him very unique is that Allah made him a true wali of Allah where, you know, it's, we, don't, we don't always uh, say these things, but it must be said sometimes that when Allah Azza wa Jal blesses someone through their hands, Allah makes many karamat come true. Now karamat are many miracles that Allah Azza wa Jal gives. So the major miracles our prophets alayhi salatu salam have, and the awliya of Allah have, have uh, many miracles, meaning that they are not like the great miracles of the prophets, but Allah Azza wa Jal shows many, many different things from these people that honestly we would not, we would not otherwise know of. Now, I just want to say, in, in front of us we have got Sheikh Nul Islam Bishnati. May, uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal extend his life. May Allah Azza wa Jal give him a lot of blessings. May Allah Azza wa Jal give his, his, the, the nur that he's given him through Gorfur Rahmatullah Alayhi, may Allah Azza wa Jal bring, you know, may Allah Azza wa Jal spread, spread that throughout the whole of the world. Maulana Nul Islam Bishanti Sahib, Damat Barakatuhum, who is on my right here, he is the senior Khalifa of Maulana Gorfur, uh, Maulana Nuruddin Gorfur Rahimahullah, who, who, who was one of the, one of the great Khulafa of Sheikh Madani uh, Rahimahullah, Hussein Ahmad Madani Rahimahullah of, of uh, India. He was one of his great Khalifas. Uh, well, actually, actually not his Khalifa, but he was his student. And later on he got his Khilafat from, from other ulama. But he was appointed by one of the other Khulafas of Malam Madani Rahimahullah to give him the Khilafa. Anyway, I'm going to go into one or two incidents that I have personally experienced. And then I'm going to hand, hand it over to Mulla Nul Islam and he's going to say a bit in Bangla and I will translate inshallah as best as I can. So the couple of incidents that I want to relate to you is <clears throat> I was in London in 1996 doing Taraweeh in North London. This was in a masjid, uh, North London, Ten Park Lane Masjid. A lot of you might know Whiteman Road Masjid, sometimes they refer, refer to it as that. So in that masjid, that particular year, what they did is they, they had uh, myself uh, sleep on the floor uh, for for the full duration of Ramadan. I, I slept on the on the floor with some you know little little sort of bedding they, they they could put, but it wasn't any mattress or anything. And after 17 days, I realized that I've got a very sharp back pain. 
I had a very sharp back pain. When I when I say sharp one, I mean when I was walking, it was like a dagger that was that was stabbing me in the back. Every time I walked, like a dagger stabbing me in the back. So I, I went to the masjid chairman and he realized his mistake. Big mistake they made. They put me onto concrete. Underneath there was concrete, it wasn't wood, and the cold went straight into my back. So straight away they got a mattress, but that didn't help. On the 17th of Ramadan, I had this back, uh, very sharp back pain. It lasted for the whole of Ramadan in, in uh, 1996. Then after that, I went to Bangladesh. And for, in Bangladesh, I went there to finish off my studies. I, I had to do my Dora or my last final year. So I went to uh, Silet uh, Shah Jalal Dargam uh, Mad Madrasa. And when I went over there, it, because the, the, the environment was, you know, after a little while, the sun came up and it was a little bit warm, the back pain went. It was there for a couple of months in Bangladesh. I, went, I landed there like in February or something. Uh, it was there for a couple of months. And after that, when the, when the sun sort of started to rise a bit, you know, the, the warmth got better and better, the back pain went. But as soon as September, October hit again and the cold started to come in, my back pain came exactly the same, very sharp back pain. What used to happen in the morning is when I was in the boarding school, when I used to get up, it used to take me 10 minutes to get up slowly, slowly, slowly to straighten my back up. And you know, I was only 23 years old. It used to take me 10 minutes to straighten my back up and then I would go and do my wudu. This was early in the morning and people used to see me, the, the other students used to see me that it used to take a bit of time for me to straighten my back and then go. So one day what happened is I went to a jalsa, I went to a gathering and our dear Monanan Nuruddin Gorfuri Rahimullah, he was there at that gathering and he was giving, giving a bayan. This was in uh, Darus Salam Madrasa in, in Silet. And when I went there, I, I didn't know, I didn't have much idea of who he was. So I, you know, so I listened to the bayan, and after the bayan, I saw a very long line wanting to meet the sheikh. Sheikh went into one room, and there was a really long line going outside the room. Maybe about a good 40 people were standing in the line, 40, 50 people. So I said, what's this line? People said, well, you know, he's the wali of Allah, people go to him, and some people, what he does, if people have seen him, some people, he grab his stick and he will beat them up. And other people, he will just, you know, ignore them, and other people, he will blow on them. And he was a very sort of, you know, unique individual, very strange. So I said, okay, let me, let me stand there and let me talk to him about my, my back pain. So I, my, my turn was coming and I could see he's, some people, he's flinging them, and some people, he's kind of, you know, okay, okay, he's talking to them nicely. And I thought, I, I don't know what he's going to do when it's my turn. So I came up to him and he goes, Hoi taki to me, where are you from? So I said, I mean London taki is. London taki. I thought, oh my God, he's going to, Kitu is. So what's happened to you? So I, I said, you know, I've, I've got this really sharp back pain that he goes, Homron has a bit now, Homron has a bit He grabbed my hand, he grabbed my hand, he pulled me, right, grabbed my hand, pulled me, and then he took his right hand and he went slack, smack, smack three times on my back. And then he flung my hand with Jao to me, Bala. He goes, go away from here, you're all right. And I thought, oh my God, you know, this is kind of freaky. All of a sudden, seeing a person like that. So I walked up, I said I had the back pain, but he said to me, go away, you're, you're fine. So I went, I went to my boarding school in, in Darga, uh, the, 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 um, the boarding place, and I slept there. Next morning, when I woke up, you wouldn't believe it, I woke up and I got up straight away. It never took me 10 minutes to, to stretch. I got up straight away. And then I thought, what? So I sat down again. I got up again. I sat down again. I got up again. The students thought I was mad. I sat and I got up again. I thought, what? Such a sharp pain for, I had for months and months. When the heat was there, it was gone because of the heat. But because it's a very sharp, cold back pain that I had. And I thought, la ilaha illallah. And you know what? This was 1996. Since then, alhamdulillah, till today, I've never had that pain again. Right? So my muhabba and my love for him increased like anything. Now I'm going to give you a second incident and then I'm going to pass it over to, to Huzur because I wish I had a lot more time with him. Alhamdulillah, I actually invited him over to that masjid, to White Man Road Masjid. Alhamdulillah, he did bayan over there as well. He met a lot of people over there as well. But I remember another incident where I, in 1997, 
in Ramadan, I, I, was, I was leading in Edmonton Masjid, Edmonton Masjid uh, in North London. And what happened, we had this Haji Farooq Saab and many others who used to come every night and they used to do, uh, the, they used to do the Taraweeh with us. So what happens one particular in the night is Haji Farooq is not there. He's not there one night, he's not the second night, he's not the third night. So people start saying, what's, what's wrong with Haji Farooq Saab? Where's he gone? Right? Haji Farooq Saab, he only passed away just a few years back. His son is Imam Faisal. Now I've had my direct connection with these people and this is the incident. Haji Farooq Saab came back after about four days to the masjid. He came with some water to me in a small, you know, after Fajr, he came with some water. And we all said, where, where have you been? He said, don't ask. He had a stroke. Now he had a stroke, half of his side was gone. He was on his bed. His whole family said, we're going to call the ambulance. He said, no. Now this is Haji Farooq Saab who had a very, very close connection with Mawlana Nuruddin Gorfuri Rahimahullah. So Haji Farooq Saab said, he said, Amar Saab Aswin. He said, I've got my huzur that I want, to, I want to contact. Get him on the phone. So they've been trying to get him on the phone, trying to get him one day, second day. And he's not allowing them to call any ambulance or go anywhere. He's just said, look, leave me on the bed. I'm just going to talk to Mawlana Nuruddin Saab. By the third day, they got contact with Mawlana Nuruddin Saab in Bangladesh. Mawlana Nuruddin Saab said, Kitu is a Farooq. So what happened to you, Farooq? So now he's you know, just speaking half around and the family are explaining all that, saying that, look, he's had a stroke. So he said, put the, put the telephone next to Farooq's ear. So they put it next to Haji, Haji Sab's ear and he said, Farooq, he said, to me, don't you now. He said, Farooq, don't be scared. He said, if I was next to you, Ech tabadiya tumar He said, if I was next to you, I would have slapped you one and you would have got straight onto, you, onto the ground. He said, but I can't come tonight all the way to England from, from Bangladesh. But I'm going to send one of my jinns to you. This is what exact, exactly. I'm going to send one of my jinns to you. Exactly at 2 a.m. in the morning, he's going to slap you on and you're going to get up. Exactly 2 o'clock. So Haji Farooq, you know, with his stroke on the, on the bed, he said exactly 2 o'clock, something hit him on the side. He fell off the bed, he came straight onto his feet and he's completely fine. He read this tahajjud and Mawlana uh, uh, Nuruddin Gurfi Rahimullah said to him, he said, Bala yasun habichab tukaya yasin shori furauka. He said, find a good hafiz sab and read surah yasin like this onto the water. He said, drink it for this many days. Now imagine a man, his whole family is a witness to this. You can even go to North London uh, and ask that the family is still there. Full stroke, half his body is gone and one slap of a jinn that he sent from Bangladesh and he's straight up on, on his feet. And there are many, many, many things that I can say about Mawlana Nuruddin Gurufi Rahimullah. But anyway, these two things I've started with, uh, I've introduced very briefly because I have a lot of mahabba, a lot of love for, for Sheikh here, who's one of the senior khalifas of Mawlana uh, Nuruddin Gurufi Rahimullah. And I have a lot of respect for him, a lot of respect for his sheikh as well. I don't want to take too much time and he's not going to like it very much if I start to talk about him because uh, in English I can say it, maybe he might not understand or maybe he might, that he's also a very big wali of Allah. May Allah Azza wa bless him and bless, bless his presence amongst us. So with that, I'm going to ask him uh, to, to start his, his bayan and, and whatever I can, inshallah, I will translate of that. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa Amma ba'd Faqala Allahu ta'ala tabaraka wa ta'ala A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ala inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim Wala hum yahzanun Baraka Allahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'anil azim ونفعنا بآياته وذكر الحكيم محترم حاضرين الكرام أمار باشا أفنا على الله عشان لك ميلنا بانغلا باشا أمي غرفوي رحمة الله علي شمبر كي خوي موشا غرو زاد دو دغو سالي تكين لال لويتو فاري دنگي سالي كون جغات لبو أمار أي غرفو رزو لا أمي أخان دنگي والا أمي سكتي وان تغي गौरवी रहमतुल्लाह लाये खंडात लेखा वाला और सिनो एक बर्स अरे फिर 75 तारीख गौरव रशिक को कतार दिवाने को नासी बर्फ तमी 
তার লগে তিন মাস লগে আসলাম মজুরা লাইফে কোনো মানুষের সঙ্গে রাখত না শুধু একটা স্বভাবে রাখত আমার এদের সময় শিক্ষক নিয়োগ দিলে আমার এখন তিন মাস আমার লগে থাকতাই আমি এই তিন মাস তার লগে সফর করছি রাইতের দিনে এই তিন মাসে আমি অনুভব করছি আমার নয় বছর পরে একটা সামর্থ্য করেছে দুস্থ বুজুর্গ আল্লাহর অলি অলর সম্পর্কে বয়ান করা ডর হরে এটা সাগর গর ফির আহমদ তো নয় মসলাম এখন অলি আসলা অলি কিলা বনয় অলির গুণ কীটা অলির খাম কীটা এক গুরু অলি হইল নমাজ নাই নানা নমাজে অলি অলির আলাস নাম হইল ফির কিন্তু যতক্ষণ লোক সাইর খাম খরছে না ই মানুষ অলি হইতে করত না হয়লা খাম হইল ইয়াতু আলাই হিম আয়াতি কি লোতে খুরান সহি হইত হইব উই আল্লিম হুমুল কিতাবা আল্লাহর কিতাবর ইলিমদার হইত হই ওই অল হিকমা আল্লাহ নবীর সুন্নত অনুযায়ী জীবন হইত হইব চতুর্থ খাম হইল কোনো একজন বুজুর্গর খন্নদার হইত হইব ওই উজাক্ষিহীন এই সাইর খাম যে করব এও আল্লাহর অলি হইব গর্ভী রহমত আল্লাহ সাইর খামের মাঝে এক থিল ভর ইমান বেসম আসিল না প্রথম ফলার জমানাত বাঘার সাহেব রহমত খেদ মতো আর এর ফলে দেওবন যাওয়ার ফলে মদনি রহমত খেদ মতো মদনি রহমত খেদ মত করতা তেল ভান মানুষ করতা আর তার নিজের শ্রাদ্ধর ওলা ওখান দিয়েও ফা ফুসি লিতা ফা ফুসি এত অন্তান লোকের রাখত মদনি রহমত আলাই যে বছর দেওবন তাকে ফাঁড়ি লইলা এই দেওবন্দর ফার্স্ট ডিভিশন ওয়ান ওইলা গর্ভী রহমতুল্লাহ আলী এই সময় আহমদ আলী সাহেব বা সন্দীর তাই না মদন সাহেব খলিফা আহমদ আলী সাহেবে বা সন্দীর বাগাত গর্ভুরিয়ে ফলাইছে আর গর্ভী রহমত যে বছর দৌরা দেন ওই বছর বা সন্দীর সাহেব দৌরা দিছেন হদিস পড়ছে গর্ভুরিয়ে নম্বর আউয়াল আর দুই নম্বর ওইলা গেছে বা সন্দীর সাহেব রহমতুল্লাহ আলী তো মদনি রহমত হেদমত দুজন গেছ যাওয়ার বাদে পাশান্দি আহমদ আলী সাহেব অখিল হাজরত মানে নুরুদ্দিন কো বাগা মে পড়া মানে দরা হতি না দিয়া তা আমি দরা হতি দিয়া তো নম্বরে উল্লা হো গিয়া নুরুদ্দিন মেরে সাগির আর মানে নম্বরে সানে কো হয়েও মদনি সাহেব বাসান্দি সাহেব খান্দি দিছে খান্দার লগে লগে মদনি সাহেব এটা কে থুজে বি আল্লাহ দেগা এই আল্লাহর অলি হতার লোকেও আল্লাহর ফেসা লো এর লাগি সাইরাকে গুফতায়েও গুফতায়ে আল্লাহ বুয়াদ গরছে আজ হাল কুমে আবদুল্লাহ বুয়াদ আল্লাহর অলিয়ে যে সময় কোনো এক সময় আছে মাঠে তখন মাতি কেন তার নাই মূল মাতি ল মাতানে ওয়ালা এর লাগি দুস্ত বুজুর্গ গরফুই রহমতুল্লাহ বড় ঐতিহ্য হইল তার জীবনে কোনো উস্তাদর বেদ বিখর্ষ তেল মলছেন মানব হচ্ছেন আর ও বছর বরিশাল ভাঙ্গাসি আত্মা কি তারা রাখছেন যে আমরা মহাদিস দুঃখা বোখারি বলার নস্তার দুঃখা গরফুই রহমত হয় নিশান আমার শরীরে কোনো গুস্ত আছিল না হাড্ডিরে খালি সামলা বেড়াইয়া রাস আমার দিছেন বরিশাল সিটি দিয়া তো বরিশাল আমি গেছি হিনগে আর সিটি দেখাইছি এটা সিটির বা চাইলে বুঝায় মদনি সাহর সিটি আর মহাদিসর পা চাইলে বুঝাতে তারা মনে মনে করো মহাদিস দিছে নি মদন হিসাবে তখন গড়ফুরি এখন আমি বুঝাই দেন তার সিটির গুরুত্ব দেন না তারা তারা যেন বখারি শুরু করে তখন ডিলার উলামা হল দল হয় কইলা মদন হিসাবর তেল মাখা রুমাল মানলাম মাতা আর একটা জুব্বা দিলা জুব্বা লাগাইলাম গোত্র লাগাইয়া দর্শ বইলাম ভূমিকা বয়ান করতে তিন ঘন্টা আর বিবাসে ভূমিকা বয়ান করছে তখন বুঝা গেছে মদন হিসাবর সিটি কিতা I've, I've actually, you know, it's quite a lot to, <laughs> to translate, to be honest with you. He first started off uh, by praising Allah Azza wa Jal and sending salutations to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After saying salam, he said that 
uh, it, if, you go to, if you look at an ocean and if you put a ship on an ocean, then the ship can go from one end to another end. But if you put a little dinghy or if you put a little boat, then the boat's going to be completely finished in the ocean because the ocean waves will take it from here to there. So he said, I'm like that little dinghy, that little boat. How am I supposed to sort of talk about uh, Gurhur Rahimullah? Uh, because he was a true wali of Allah. And he said, I'm, I'm sort of scared to uh, even talk about him because these are, you know, th these are great people. Uh, and then he said he spent time with uh, Gurhur Rahimullah from 1961. Uh, and from 1975, he's been very, very close to him. In fact, he said his uh, Rahimullah wouldn't allow anyone to stay with him, uh, you know, with him all the time. But the Sheikh here on my right has spent three close months with him. And after his nine years of study, he finds that those three months have completed his real studies. Um, you know, and, and the closest that he's supposed to get with, with Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, he says that no wali of Allah can be a wali without completing four things. One is that they have to have a connection with the Quran. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. Another one is that that person has to have a very good understanding of Allah's a book and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sunnah. But they also have to have the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa implemented in their lives. And they also have to have spent time with some great uh, person who's close to Allah and to then emulate their behavior with, that, with the behavior of that shaykh or that great person. And he says, Gurfi rahimullah has had all of these things in him. Where he's, he, he was the student of Shaykh Hussein Ahmad Madin rahimullah. And Shaykh Hussein Ahmad Rahimullah had actually sent him to Silet to actually um, to teach, to teach. And he, you know, when the people there requested that they wanted uh, a, a, a Sheikh to come and, and teach, they, gave, they sent him. But when they sent him in, in, in Borishal, but when they sent him, he came, he had the letter of Mullah Hussein Ahmad Madin Rahimullah. But when they looked at him, they thought, who's this young man? Because God in his own words says that I never even had any meat on my body. Right? Like I was this skinny individual, young individual. So when they made him, uh, when they told him to teach in his first lesson, he gave a lecture in Arabic for three hours nonstop. And when he gave that, then they thought, subhanAllah, this, this is a real sort of, you know, person who Hussein Ahmad Madani rahimahullah has sent over to us. Um, he said another incident as well where, you know, he was so great that one of his teachers who taught him went with him later on to take an exam together. They both took an exam together in the final year. And Mawlana Nuruddin Gurfud, Rahimullah, who was the student of this teacher, he actually came number one in the, in, in the exam. Uh, and then his teacher cried and, and complained to Shaykh Hussein Ahmad Madani rahimullah, saying that, you know, I taught this young man and he's become, you know, he's got, gone ahead of me, he's become number one. So Mullah Hussein Ahmad rahimullah, said, said that Allah will also give to you as well. Okay, so that is a very brief part. Ektai be nozi rasla. Tan shatte salafirat kure shatte rakta na. Ek din amar ek mamar bali balagish thalatu forse. Ohanu amar na na fukri fukur kudeisu. Fukuri madhe fuf dita. I fuf tane fani na uta hum to ufar manus porto na. Fuku. Puff could take a take a take a take a grom suruise, Tom Manus de Rayo Tigerson. They had Utia, Horse and Fukut Takia, O Fuf Takia, Gunutiasta Bariza Lunima. Son, son Basar Goras. Air for Taki, a Bariva, the Akamano Shopra Fagoltaki. Amarek Mamu Biasadio for Sena, Arama Biasadio for Yakisudin Bade, Fagol Lugason, Arama Halugason. Last day, I bali shariyat ar onno zagat kesi. Onno zagat pore amar hol bolom amuzin. In bolom amu 
যে জায়গাত কেন ফুরানবাড়িতে হান্দাত তখন ফুরানবাড়ি তারা টানা সকালা ইয়ানো হানা দানা হাইতা মার বিপ রক্ত তারা যাই থাকি হবার আমার মামি গেছেন গিয়ে আগে আর মামা রয়েছেন মামিও কে নোমাল ফরিয়া মাগরি পর তুমি আই গুবার মানে মাগরি পরে বাড়ি কে সৈন্যা খোঁজ করি এখন খবর নাই 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 তাই দুইটার সময় দেখো নদী একু কি ধূপ আছে ধূপের মাঝে খালা হলা সন্দরিয়া গেতুলিয়া আনছেন বেউস অবস্থায় আনার বাদে এর ঘরে ডাক্তরের ঘরে আসছি কইছেন নাইনটিথ থুদুর আমেরিকাত নিউ ইয়র্ক মাল ফলাইছে এর ফলে লন্ডন আইছে আমার এই মামুর গোষ্ঠী তারা বাই হল তাহেন অঞ্চল ইন্ন আর ঘরে তারা কে আপনি হুজুরে কেন গরো নিয়া যে আমার মামুর গরো বাই বিলা হুর গরো বাই আমার কথা পরিচয় দিছে বিলা ইচ্ছা যে মাসাত কিছু টেখা দো বোলে মাসার টেখা উৎখা রয়েছে না বাড়িতে উদ্যোগ টেখা হল দি হটাই কি বাদ আপনি সঙ্গে বাড়িতে নিত তার মূল উদ্দেশ্য হুজুর দে বাড়িত নিত আমার ভানখরি হয়েছে ওলা ওলা আমি তারা সারা হিস্টোরি হুজুর হইলাম আয়া যে ফুকরি ঘটনা করছে ও ফুকির গা ট্রাই অজু হল না অজু করিয়েও আমার ওইখানে যাব আজর টাইম গেছেন মাল ফুটলি মো তারা হল মাজর হল আমি গা তারা এর মাজর প্রস্তুতি ভরাইছি আইয়া হুজুরে ইফর গর দান আজান শুরু করছে আজান দিয়া নমাজ পড়ছে নমাজ পড়িয়া আর আমার মামুর ঘরে বাইয়ে কইলা যে হুজুর আপনারে বললে মাই জিন্নাতে তুলা দিনে গর্ভ হুজুর চলা ফিরার যদি লাইফ শেষ সেও হিসাব করে মেফ করে তো সৈব জিন্নাত চলা ই মানুষ নাই ও আধা ঘন্টার আগে অন্য আধা ঘন্টা মাঝে পঞ্চাশ মাইল দূরে ওলার তখন আমার বাইয়ে কইলা আপনার জিনবুতে তুলা দিন আগে কই না বাই জিনবুতে নেই কিন্তু আমি শুনতা বুঝি না আমি যেন গেলে বেশ হবো একসে বই যাই খিতা সে বইল কিতা বেশ বই লো সৌ কম দি এক কারণ কইলে একদিন লক্ষীগঞ্জি মানে আব্দুল গনি সাহার মদ্রসা আলি খান আলি খান আলি খান ধান জসার যাইতা তাই জ্যাঠা বাদে গেছে সারবাগ গেছে না কোনো গাড়ি নাই খান তো ওই সময় গিয়া মসজিদে হুতুলি যাওয়ার হইলাম আল্লাহ আমি তো আলি খান যাইতাম আছে আটটা শুনে তফিরের আওয়াজ তফির আওয়াজ শুনে হজাক গিয়ার দিকে আমি আলি খান জসা স্টেজ যান সুহান ইয়ার বাদে তার কথা হইলা এই মাটির ওই ফুলার মাঝে বাসদার আসিল বাসদারও নিছে জিন্নাতর ফানির জিন্নাতর বাসা আসিল তোমরা বাসা ভাঙি নিছ বখারি ধরিও হতম ঘোরা ট্রেহা অঞ্চলা দ আর উলামা নিয়ে বাড়িতে খাই ত্রাহ আলহামদুলিল্লাহ ও যে উলামা গিয়া বাড়িতে গিয়া রইসলা আর বখারির হতম খরছিলা ইয়ার বাচ্চা কি আইসর তারা ইচ্ছা মতো পনেরো বছরই আর আর তার ফোন মানুষ পাগল হয়েছে এই He's uh, talking about an incident where his own, um, he, his own Nanar Bari, which means that it's his grandpa's uh, place, his mother's sort of side. So he's saying that in that, in that place, they, they actually dug, when they, when they came there to their, to their place, what we have in Bangladesh is we, we dig into the ground and we make something called a fukur, which is you, you, you make a pond. And from that pond, you sort of, you know, maybe do wudu, you bathe, you wash things and so on and so forth. So when they, when they did that and they started to dig there, one after another of his uncles started to become <coughs> insane. One after another in, 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 that, in that particular you know, household that they, were, that they were in. And what happens is in the end, they leave that place, these are his mamu, these are his uncles, they leave that place and they, they, they make a home in another nearby place. So what they would do is they would go to this place that they own first, they would eat there, and by the evening they would leave it and go to their new place and stay there. there would, no one would stay there in the, in, the, um, in, in, in the old place. And what happens is one evening his uh, eldest uh, uncle, maternal uncle, He goes over there and before Maghrib he's supposed to come back. His wife said come back before Maghrib or just after Maghrib come back. And he actually doesn't come back. And they wait, 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 wait for him. They didn't come back. By two o'clock in the night they see that in that place that they dug 
to have to get a pond he's he's standing there and and he's completely unaware of what's what's going on so they take him out of there and then they get doctors and so on and they and they treat him but obviously he's he's now not in his senses okay and many people in that place had actually lost their senses so he's now talking about 1990s where uh, Godfrey Rahimullah, he went to New York and then he came to London. And then he came to a particular house where the individuals were linked to this village and to this particular place. So Mulan Nuruddin Godfrey Rahimullah said that, you know, as in his conversation, he said, look, my madrasa needs some, needs some funds and so on. So the person said, look, I finished all the money that I've got here, but if you want some funds, then go to Bangladesh, to this place where my village is, where my place is and I, I've got some funds there for you. His whole intention was to take Gorfu Rahimullah to his place. So in the end, it was so that Gorfu Rahimullah went to his place. By Zohar, what he did is he uh, did wudu at that place where the pond was, he did wudu there. Then he gave the adhan. Uh, they had Salat al-Jama'ah together of Zohar Salah. And then Gorfu Rahimullah, he obviously, you know, you know one, one thing, uh, is that you know he's saying is that one of the things about him is that Allah Azza wa Jal had done something for him which is known to to happen to those people who get close to Allah and even in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's his own dua is something called tayyul ard which is Allah Azza wa Jal he shrinks the earth for such people so he's saying that the people in that in that village you know in that in that home they said, we heard that jinns take you from one place to another place. He said, I don't know about jinns taking me to, from one place to another place, but when I go to a place and when I'm there um, and I want to go somewhere, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal, where, where, it's, where it's not appropriate for me to travel so far, Allah Azza wa Jal makes it appropriate for me. Okay? So he said that, you know, that there are, if, you, if you look at his travels, people will say it's impossible for a human to do such travels. So you see him here right now, and within half an hour you see him that he's already gone 50, 50 miles or 50 kilometers to another place where it's, where it's very, very difficult uh, for people to travel to that place in, you know, in, in, that, in, in that way. So there, there are many, many incidents like this where, where he will travel from one place to another place and Allah Azza wa has made it, made it easy for him. There's one place he's saying that he, he wanted to go to uh, some place and he made dua and within minutes he was at this other place which is many, many miles apart. Uh, many, many miles apart and there are many, many incidents like this of, of Nuruddin Ghutu Rahimullah. So in that particular place what happened is that he said when he came there, he said that there were jinns who were living at the place where they dug. And the jinns' home was there. They broke their home to try and make this pond. And because of that, the jinns have attacked the, 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 the people who are trying to make that home in that place. So he, he said, gather some ulama and finish off Sahih Bukhari. Read the Sahih Bukhari from beginning to end. And when you do that, and you know, they, they make dua, uh, all the problems of that place will be gone. So they did that, alhamdulillah, there's been nobody else who's become insane in that place and people have actually been cured. 75 years ago, we were able to get a new way to go. We were able to get a new way to go. We were able to get a new way to go. We were able to get a new Hugla Bazar ekta area se. Ohana ratre wazar program forsi, uzuro bayan forsi, ami bayan forsi. Bayan forre baliyar uzuro songe amrar. Oshomay ek rugi ek doctor of sab prasto, handsome prasto doctor. Bulki doctor na daroga. The isha sar faro dubu egu daroga aregu arokita ofisa. হঠাৎ করে তার মুখ মাত বন্ধ হয়ে গেছে মাতে না সে তারে হইছে সে সিলেটি ফিসা বুঝুর আইছই সারা বেঙ্গলে মাইছে গরফুর উদ্দিন সিলেটি ফিসা বুঝুর ডাক্ত তা না থেকে সে আর পরে উদ্দিন হইলা আমি অজু ইস্তেনজা করি তো অজু ইস্তেনজা করছই তার ফাগলি তাক সব সময় মাতা অজু করতে করে ফাগলি আড়ুরে থইয়া আবার ফাগলি বই দিলা Allah khatta mantu magli magli mantu. Er fore Allah boi soin. Re to abhi aarosiyara niya kani pura rukiri ano. 
খুব শান্তন অবস্থা হুজুর রুগীর আনছে আর খালি রুগীর বা চাইছে নলা আর হুজুরের চেরা ছবির রাগান্বিত হইয়া বিদার বিক্ষিপ্ত হয়েছে দারোগার ফুয়া দারোগাও আনো আর তার ভাই নো আর উদ্দেশ্য মানুষ আনো আর আরম্ভ হয়েছে শহর শহর দেন আর খালি খেন আল্লাহ দিওয়াত দিয়ে সাড়ে দশটা শহর দিছে লগে লগে আল্লাহ হয়ে গেছে আমি আপনার দেখি আমি ডাক্তর শালিক সাহাব সিলেটের নাম করা মানুষ রকিব সাহাব কোনো রুগীরে তো যে তার চেম্বার শহর একটা মারে এক ঘন্টার ভিতর চেম্বার জাগাত তা হব নি গরমের সময় লাঠির বাড়ি খাইব লাগে মানুষ হইত আতর সর খাইব লাগে মানুষ হইত ইয়ার ফলে মানে মাতি লিছে দেশ আল্লাহ হয়ে গেছে ওখান বুঝা যায় একটা প্রাণের বন্ধু আগে দেখা গেল দুশ্মন লাগান তুজকে এরা মানে জানে চাই নে খাইতে হইতে খাইতে হইতে পারো নি তো এটা এখন মানে অকল সময় খায় না চায় না সানি রুচি দুর্বল হয়ে গেছে উফানিতে ডাকিয়া খাই নাও নাই তোর আর বাপ দুর্বল হয়ে গেছে নি তার মধ্যে সানি বনের ইনতে দাম ঠিক রাখিও আর কেন নজর রাখিও ইয়ার ফলে কোনো তেল ভোলাও না পানি ভোলাও না ফুও না তাবিজ না ও তো বারে হই না আমি বারো বারো নি বাদে দেখে এলাম যে উদুরি ন বিষয় রাখি তা এটা কিতাব বিষয় হইতে উদুরি আর দুঃখী আছে মাঝে মাঝে আমার সামনে যে সময় আনছে আমি দেখি দারোগাগিরি হরতের সময় গুস খাইয়া কোন গরিবর ফলটা তাগুন লাগাইছে আর অগ্নি দিছে বদুয়া আর ওয়ে তার ষাঠির ধরে নিয়েছে মানে আমি কিতা করতাম আমি আল্লাহ রাখি না আল্লাহ তারে কিন্তু শাস্তি করি তুমি তারা মাফ করে দিল ও সর দিছি দুস্থ বুজুর্গ কোন জায়গাত বেমার আর কোন জায়গাত ঔষধ আল্লাহর বললে যে ঠিক করতে পারে ইলার খেউ করতে পারে In 1975, he says that he went uh, to this place, Netrokuna Huglo Bazar, uh, and they both gave a lecture, him and the Sheikh Nuruddin Guru Rahimullah. And when they gave this uh, lecture over there, there was a uh, sort of a daroga, which, how would you translate daroga? It was like a, would you, like a policeman, but higher than a policeman, right? Uh, like a chief. Uh, so, so, What happens is he's there with, with other policemen and all of a sudden what happens is he's not able to speak. He's not able to speak. So he's, he's completely, you know, speech, speech and he's become dumb. So what happens is people say, take him to the Sileti Huzur. They're referring to Nuruddin Gorfi Rahimullah. Firsab Huzur. Sileti Firsab Huzur, meaning that this is the, this is the great sheikh of, of Silet. So take him to him and see what he can, what, what, what he can do. So they brought him to him and Mananuddin Gorfi Rahimullah, he said, okay, he said, bring him over here. He did his wudu. And when he did his wudu, he says that he, he put his amama, his turban on his knee and he would then do masa over his head and put the, the, the amama back on his head. So he did his wudu, he came, sat down and he said, bring him in front of me. So they brought that, like the, like the you know, chief police or whoever he was, brought, brought him in front of him, uh, sat him on the chair and Gorfi Rahimullah looked him into the eye and his whole sort of face sort of changed. And as he looked him into the eye, Gorfi Rahimullah started to then slap him with both, both his hands, okay? Slapped him a good eight, ten times. And Allah. kept on say, saying to him, say Allah, say Allah, say Allah. And then after about eight, ten times having slaps from him, he says Allah. So, so, You know, he's saying that such was the wali of Allah, a close person to Allah Azza wa Jal, that people used to come from distance, distances away just to get a slap from him or just to get beaten up by him. Because, like, you know what I said to you earlier on? I, got, I didn't know, I got some beats from him, three slaps on my back, and then, and then you're up and running again, you're fine. So people used to come from distant places to get that from him. So he's saying that Dr. Uh, Khalid, uh, Khalid Saab, who's from Silet, is a very good doctor. If you were to go to, you know, if you were to take such a person who's lost his voice or who can't speak, if you were to take him in front of Dr. Khalik and Dr. Khalik was to slap him for one hour, you know, how long, how long would the patient be able to take it? So he said, when Gauru Rahimullah made, you know, he said to him, say Allah, by the eighth or tenth time, this chief says Allah. And then he speaks to him before it seemed like the, the chief was a little bit sort of against Sheikh. But when Sheikh started to speak to him, Uh, you know, he started to become friendly to him. 
towards him. Then he told his sons, he said, you know, your father, he says, give him good, good food and so on, uh, look after him and so on. And he left from that place. After he left from there, uh, our Sheikh here uh, asked him, said, Sheikh, what was that all about? What, what, what happened there? So Sheikh Nuddin Gauri Rahmullah said, he said, when I looked at him, when I looked into him, I realized, and this is from the firasa of the awliya, Allah Azza wa Jal gives them an inner sight that they see things. He said, when I looked at him, I saw that he, takes, he used to take a lot of bribes. And by taking a bribe, he oppressed a poor person and he, you know, he put him in a very difficult position. And that poor person cursed this chief cursed him and because of the curse this curse got onto he got onto his neck meaning that he made him speechless and made him dumb he said when i looked at him i realized that was the that was this the sin that this man had committed so i turned to allah and i said oh allah please forgive this individual um, you know forgive him don't punish him and then i started to slap this individual saying say allah say allah now gurgur rahimullah used to do this saying that you know, he, he said, uh, I, I'm translating something which he said to me earlier in, in, with, this, with this incident. He said to me earlier, he said that, Gurfi Rahimullah actually told him, he said that, I used, to say, I used to say to Allah, that, oh Allah, you want to punish this person, instead of you punishing this person, look, I'm punishing him for you, right? I'm giving him some punishment, so just forgive him, just forgive him. And he says, often when Shaykh used to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal and used to say this, then Allah Azza wa Jal used to sort of, you know, cure the person. So this is Allah curing this person, obviously, but this, this is how the, how the awliya of Allah, uh, you know, were, particularly our Nuruddin Gurfi rahimahullah. আমি গরফুজ রহমতুল্লাহ সর্বপ্রথম হজ হরসেন বা অন্য ইংরেজিত এ সময় হজ বাঘার সাহ আসলা থান শ্বশুর মৌলানা আব্দুল খালিক সাহ মদনি সাহর খলিফা আর মদনি রহমতুল্লাহ এই বুঝল বহল আসলা তো আমি যে সময় নাইনটি ওয়ান হজ গেলাম এটি ফোর এবার আমার হার্ট এজ কয়া গরফুর বাইকটিন আমার সেন্স আসলো এর ফলে স্প্রে রাখতাম পকেটও নাইনটি ওয়ানও অকল ফয়লা হজ আইলাম হজুরের লগে আইয়া আরফার ময়দান ইয়ামে জুমা আসিল আরফা হুজুরের দিয়ে ফাও আঞ্জা করে দল আঞ্জা করে দরিয়া ফিলাম দে হুজুর আমার লাগে তিনটা দোয়া উঠ একটা দোয়াই ল যতদিন দুনিয়াত বাসিয়া তামু হাড়ের বেমারে মারে হয়তো না আমি আর স্প্রে মারতাম না দুই নম্বর দোয়াই ল আমি যে মদ্রাসার দায়িত্বে পুরুষের মদ্রাসার দায়িত্বে এই মদ্রাসারা বহু পুরানা এটা বন্ধ আছে আতাপুর মদ্রাসা আত্রা খুব বেহাল মহালিফ ফিলাম দেব দূর মদ্রাসা লাগে আল্লাহ কবুল করত ও দুই নম্বর দোয়া তিন নম্বর দোয়াই ল আমি যতদিন বাসিয়া তাহ আল্লাহ পাকে আমার দিনের কেন মতো রাখত আমার কইলা এখন বেমারের দই দিব আরফা তো মারার দোয়া করলাম আর হইলা বাকি দিয়ে দোয়া মদিনা চলি গেল হইলমোর চিঠি মদিনাত খেদমতর চিঠি মদিনাত এর ফলে মগরিব বাদে মজদুল্লাভাত আইলাম মজদুল্লাভাত আইয়া মসজিদে মাসারে হারাম আর কিবলা মুখ হইলে মাসারে হারাম পড়লে আমরা বাম দিকে কিবলা মুখা বইলে ডান দিকে ফাঁড় পড়ে আমি আমার দেখাই রাম দে হুজুর আপনি তো মদনি রহমতুল্লাহ আলাইন লগে পয়লা হজ করছেন আর কিতাব আছে আরফা তাল্লা নবী দোয়া করছেন যে সব বহুমতে মাফ কর আল্লাহ করে জালিম মাফ করতাম না মজদুল্লাহ তাই লাস্টে দোয়া করেন আল্লাহ রসুলে জাল্লাহ আর সব উম্মত মাফ করে দাও আল্লাহ ফাঁকে জালিমার ওকে দোয়া কবুল করে নিছি দিয়ে অতি যেসব করলাম গর ফুরে দিকে নাম এক বছরে ফোন করলো এক বছর টেখা মারিয়া খাইল উগুরি যে মাফর দিলা সেই টেখা আনার কিতা অবস্থা তো উঠিয়া খইলা প্রেসিডেন্টে যদি খুঁড়ে খুঁড় লইলে কোনো বেটা এখন তা করতে হার পায়নি আসল উদ্দেশ্য হইল সরকারের প্রেসিডেন্টের বেঞ্চ সজিতাতে তার বগল সিবা তাম আল্লাহ তীর মারণ বন্ধার ঘুরে 
ते तीन दिन से मैं टारगेट करे ते दुनिया तीन मरना टारगेट से बस्तवार बो अल्लाह ने तीन तक ही बस्तवार बो नहीं तो खेल बस्तवार है खोता से लेकिन ता मैं अल्लाह से ना तीन दिन से तुम्हारे तुलादी से आद दिया लोगों ने तुम्हारी बोलो तीन माही तो बोलो तीन माही तो माही ले अर्थ तो तीन ही वाय गुरतो ना खेल सरकार बाइल होते फले अल्लाह तारे ऐसा हुरों दिले ही वो दार्ते कहाँ भाई तो मरिया कहीं से हुरे हुरों अल्लाह दिले ही वो एम बुद्ध दिले ही वो ये हम तो आसन का अल्लाह ना आसे ओ खेल हम दे ते मदनी से कुन जगह बुशला और कुन जगह बुया दुआ कर सिला ओ खेल ओ जगह का तमी बुशित मारे लिया ओ जगह मदनी से बुशला और खुद आरवार दो ही लो और जोर सफीदियों के लिए तो उन्होंने लोग खत अश्वका सफीर वो फालों नाम लो सफीर और वो सफीर फालों रुफ़ेद में सुरखिया फोड़ी जब उनकी सुरजोर उठा किरोन और उसमें दुआ अपना ही दुआ दुई दुआ मुदीना कर सकते हैं जो कोई मो सो इस तो कन बात our Sheikh Nuruddin Gorfi Rahimahullah that his first Hajj was done in 1952 with Sheikh Hussain Ahmad Madin Rahimahullah and Bagar Sahib and other great uh, awliya of Allah, they did Hajj together. So he said personally that he's had a heart condition from about 1984 and then he, in 1991 he did a Hajj with Mullah Nuruddin Gorfi Rahimahullah and on the day of Arafat he went to him and he fell, he, he, he grabbed hold of his sort of, sort of legs and he said, you know, uh, Huzur or Sheikh, I want you to do three du'as for me. One was that he does not have to take any more nasal <laughs> spray, no more nasal spray for his heart, uh, for his heart condition. Second one was that one of his mothers that he had, he wanted that to be very successful. And the third one, he said that, Sheikh, I want you to make a du'a for me that up until my death, I want to stay in the service of the religion. So the Sheikh, uh, Rahimahullah, said, the dua, the first one that you asked, I'll do it here right now in Arafat. And he said, as for the other two, I will do that in Medina Munawwara. Because this is the place of making this dua. And the other ones that you wanted are to do with your sort of ilm and your knowledge and so on. And that's going to be done in Medina Munawwara. Sheikh made dua for that. And then when they left from Arafat and they went to Muzdalifa, what happens is that Sheikh Nuruddin Rahimullah, he sits in a particular place. Uh, that that night, which is a place where you would find Masjid Mashar al-Haram to be on your left, and there's a mountain towards your right. And he sits there, and then he makes dua. And then he quotes a, a narration of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua for the ummah, for the whole ummah. And he asked that, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal forgives, even those who are oppressors, Allah Azza wa Jal forgives them. So apparently according to one hadith, that was accepted, that Allah Azza wa Jal would do that. So the Shaykh asked, he said, how is this possible that, you know, somebody who's, who's done a, a great crime in this ummah, maybe he's killed someone, maybe he's done some other crime, that he's forgiven by, by Allah Azza wa Jal, even though he's done this crime, how will such people get forgiven? So then Shaykh Nuruddin Qurfi Rahimullah, he explained that, you know, if a president wants to place someone on his own lap, then is there anyone that can come and touch him? Meaning that once you have been granted the forgiveness from a high authority, then who's there to question you? So he says, if somebody was to try and, you know, aim an arrow towards you and hit you, then there's one way only to save yourself, is to come straight underneath his armpit or near, near him to his side where he can't actually hit you and aim at you with that, with that arrow. So similarly, he says, when Allah Azza wa wants to punish you, if you fall onto, sort of fall onto you, you know, your, your face or whatever, towards Allah Azza wa then that is the only way that you can get his forgiveness. And Allah Azza wa when he wants to forgive someone, no matter what crime you've committed, Allah Azza wa can, can forgive you. So then he's talking about that particular night when, when Mawlana Nuruddin Qurfi Rahmullah is sitting there and he's making dua. He asked Mawlana Nuruddin, he said, you know, you've done Hajj with uh, Mawlana Hussein Ahmad Madani Rahimullah in 1952. Where did he sit on this night, on this particular time, and where did he make dua? And Mawlana uh, Nuruddin Qurfi Rahmullah said, this is the exact place where I'm sitting. And the dua to be made is, when the sun is rising and you know that morning after Arafat the sun is rising 
where there's a whiteness in the little whiteness that will appear in the sky and after that there's a redness that will appear as the sun is rising that is the time for him to make, to make dua and that is the exact place and exact time that Mawlana Hussain Ahmad Madin Rahimullah also made dua Air Force the Shamoy Makasharif Taki Madina Sharif Galam Amar Fuela Hojita Nantiwano Hino the Arfur Am Huilam the Huzur Uzir Huila Madanisa or Logazan or Hoj Horsoin Madina Sari or Turdike at a Haduro Gasasil of Kuyeti at building us. Air Bade Uhud for Don Tokunu Gordor Kituasi. Tara the Arotokos and Ahudo, Atia, Galigulon Tamisha Fronto Hilam de Uzur, Madonna Motula Leto, Araro Tur Madina Sari Bukharishi Police Ita Kunjaga. Therefore, the Azul and Natokis is a Gao Hodase, is a Gantamaja Dahole Dahobuloi. I'm not a Modonisa de Hajin, I still Modonisa Nayahunam Rada de Hoka. As the Arotor, Mul. Tortip Kila, Allah, the Susanimor, Ito Amnam Rada de Hook. Tamara Huila, Hashavala Trat, Pojabadu, the Arotoku Biro. I then for the Arotoria Manus Nasta Hayagumite. Rishma Romsari to Halio, Hila Hashavala Trat, the Shavala Trat Galam, Amaria Uzira, Manstilia, Manusatta, Allah, Yadu Janata, my son. Tamara Shatta Falas in Aila. Shat Falan will it be a Dahole Dahobulo. Ermada Shopte de Besi Dahobulo, Ustuana Taisha of the Lautalanha. Yadulan Natoma de Horse. Tamidikailam the Afalan Nam Ashahila. Lohusam do not talk to him. I shall have the Lautalan Arahuta, the Yadulan Natra Gase. Is a Gazutami for the same for a day. The manager is not able to do it. He is not able to do it. Allah is not able to do it. He 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 is not only that green as it, green or not, so no, so no color has. Well, or mother tinta valla. Oh, yeah, the first time. Ah, Hususan is a member of Padita, Ustuana Tahanana. Tamiko Ustuana Tahanana, who fell out of the city of me. I mean, to have the daughter of Alatuya, the Valla Hansi. I'm not going to go to Tagan, Falata Vitri, Rayatara, base for Yadali for this Vitri. Fiskaru <laughs> Ajahn, <laughs> Inno ye khala bata kita. Ek fatta ki arata fatta ada in ada ekhat tin fa duroi. Ye khobar gula kila. Tamara kila inno khobar aur system hi lo. Jaman o huzur se mat kuro khobar. Raza. Aro Allah ma bir raza kur bara bor. O hi lo. Abu kara siddi kar khobar. Abu kara siddi kar khobar aur kur bara bor hi lo umar mata. এই সিস্টেমে আর কত কি বোঝা যাবে এখান তো রিনা এর ভিতরে দেখা যাবে না এখান তো ছেলা যারা করলাম যারা থইয়া হইলাম এর পরে আমার রিয়া ফরেদি করলাম ইয়া গেলা গিয়া কই ভালো করেছে 
ওলার কাছে গিয়া আমার হইলা রজা আক্তর মুখা ওলা দিল্লি তো অর্জু দিয়ে মো রাখাবা কর আমি কিনা যে রাখাবা তো কিবলা মুখা করেন কিবলা তো দক্ষিণ নদী ভরি যায় আমরা এখন ইনর কিবলা মুখা ফিস দিলে ইলাম কিলা না ইনর ইনর জিয়ারত মো রাখাবা হইল রসুলর চেনা মুখা মুক্ত হত হইও বইছি বইয়া আমি যখন বেগুর হয়ে গেছি কি আমি কোনটা হইতাম চোখ মজা আমার বাম সাইডে তো হজুর আর ডাইন সাইডে যে আমি বন্ধু হজুর ওই সময় আটটা দেখি আমি যেমন সাত আট পর্যন্ত রেখা পাচ্ছি আমি আর আমার ওলা দর্শন হুজুর আঙ্গুলি দরিয়া রাজুল যান বাবু সালামাজি ডুকরা হরম সরিব আসল তো আমরা হরম বনো কিন্তু আমি দেখি মদিনা শরীফর মসজিদে হরম ডুবতে হইলে শূন্য তো হইল বাবু সালামাজি ডুকতাম হরণ যদি আমার লিয়া ডুক সইল আমরা এনা বিয়াত থাকতাম তো আমায় আমি ছোটো বাচ্চা আমার আমি জানা তো জোরা আর এনা বিয়া মুখা ভোট দিছি ফুনা ফুনি তোমার নয় দুঃখী আমায় ভোট দিছি আর রেজুল জান্নাও ঘরতে ওই সময় দেখি আল্লাহ রসুল সাল্লাহমর রজাত তাকিয়া এটা সাফার পড়ছে ফানির সাফার পড়ছে আর আশা রায় মুগরা দশজন সাহাবির একসঙ্গে বেস্ট সার্টিফিকেট দিছিলা ও দশজনে গোসল করা লাইন দরিয়া সকল ফাইন আবকর সিদ্দিক রাজি আল্লাহ তালা নু এর বাদে উমর এর বাদে উসমান এর ফরে আলী এর ফের তালহা ওলা হল সাহাবাই করা আর এই সাফার ফানি আটটা মদিনা মহ থলিছে আর আমি খালি ফালাই ফেলে আটতাম আর সাইরাম ওই সময় আর দেখে গোসল করতে হয়নি বলে জি হয় পানি আওলা দরিয়া আমার হনার ছেলে আমারই আবকর সিদ্দিক আমার আগে আর উমর আদিন আমার ঘরে আর মাঝানোর দিনে একটা নোয়ারি হারাইছে হারাইছেন যে সময় তখন আমি দেখি ফানি ফর্সে আর উপকার উমর সমর নিছি আমি আর ফানি ফর্তে ফর্তে এমন একটা অবস্থা হয়েছে যে আস্তা শরীর বিধি গেছে কি আর মৌতে মৌতে গেছে গালে আমার শরীর আর ওই সময় আটটা উঠে চলো ভাই ও মোরা কাবাতে টান ভাই তুললো আমার সঙ্গে আমার সব এই আসিল গর্ব এই রকমতে অবস্থা So he's talking about when they went from Mecca to Medina, uh, from, from that Hajj is talking about in 1991 when they went to uh, Medina Munawwara. Uh, Gorfi Rahimahullah was, was with him uh, at, that, at that place in Medina Munawwara and then they said to him that, please, Sheikh, we want you to tell us what, where are these blessed places where the du'as are accepted. We want you to show us those places and then Uh, show us the exact way of how we should do our ziyarah as well and how we should greet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the morning, I will show you. So then he said, after Fajr, normally people make a lot of crowd outside the roda and it becomes very crowded for people to you know, sit there peacefully. But at 8 o'clock, people have eaten their breakfast and so on and they've gone to their bedsides and it becomes easy then for, for, for people to come and to, to do the ziyarah. So 8 o'clock the next morning they went over there and, and he's talking about the time when, you know, Manana Madani rahimahullah before that he even, you know, when he was in Medina Munawwara, between the Masjid Nabawi and between Uhud, which is on the northern side, there was not a single tree. And Manana Madani rahimahullah used to even walk from the Masjid 18 years. Manana Hussein Ahmad Madani rahimahullah, he taught, uh, you know, he taught there in Masjid Nabawi. And he would often go to, uh, to Uhud by walking there, but there was nothing between them. Imagine how, how, how you know, uh, that, that time was. So he, he asked where, you know, Mawlana Madin Rahimullah would sit, and he, he sat and gave dars, he showed that place and so on. But 8 a.m. next day, then he started to show them the places where uh, the du'as are actually accepted in Riyadhul Jannah. So Riyadhul Jannah, for, for our understanding, is... When you go in Masjid Nabawi, you normally find uh, you know, red carpet all over. But then there's a section right next to the Prophet's grave where there's a green carpet. That is the Riyadh al-Jannah. And he showed several different places there where du'as are accepted. One of those places he showed was Ustuwada Aisha radiallahu anha. This was the pillar of Aisha radiallahu anha. So he asked, and this is in, in uh, Riyadh al-Jannah, if you, if you can get a map or something, you'll find it is there. Or you look at the pillars right at the top, the names are actually written on the pillars. So seven different places he showed them where du'as are accepted. One of them was this place, and he said, what is the secret to this? So he said, when Rasulullah was alive, 
He said to Aisha radiallahu anha that I can show you a place within Riyadhul Jannah. I can show you a place that if you make a dua there, it will be accepted. And people would actually even <clears throat> throw a ballot to, to try and get to that place and sit there and spend time there. So in his lifetime, he showed Sayyidatana Aisha radiallahu anha that place. She knew that place. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after her, he put a pillar there. And when Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu's time came, when the extension time came, they made sure that the, that, that pillar was still marked there, that exact space where uh, the dua is accepted. At that place, he performed two rakats, he made dua there, and then he showed him other places as well. There's Ustwana, Abu Lubaba, and, and another sort of pillar. And each of these pillars has a different story behind it. So then, uh, the Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Nurudun Gorhu Rahimullah took him towards the place where, they, where you give the salam. So as they went there, they, they, you know, he's now explaining how when you go to the Rolda, you, you see three uh, sort of round golden um, sort of, um, it, it almost looked like kind of handles, but, but golden sort of um, uh, shape that you can see. It's almost like a hollow shape you can see. So one is there, the big one is there, and the next to that, there are two smaller ones next to that that are close by. So he's now explaining that if you imagine that, you know, when you're giving the salam, the Prophet ﷺ face is actually towards you. He's, he's towards you, so his face, which means that his body, like if you're facing the, the roda, his, his feet would be towards your right, his head would be towards your left. So when you bury a person, you put you tilt the face slightly towards the right so you can imagine that the prophet ﷺ's face is slightly tilted towards the right towards the qibla where you're standing because you're now facing you're facing the, the roda the qibla is behind you okay so where rasulullah ﷺ is buried where his his thigh is that's where sayyidina <laughs> abu bakr anhu's head is and his grave starts from there Okay, and if you go to the thigh side of Abu Bakr anhu, behind him, Sayyidina Umar anhu, is buried. So that's where the three sort of you know the, the, the three graves of the three uh, honourable individuals, uh, may Allah Azza bless them in this world and the next world. That's where they're buried. So they gave the salam, and then he went towards the wall side, and he said, "Now close your eyes." So he closed his eyes, and as he closed his eyes, he said, "Suddenly." He was gone into another world, as in you know now he's kind of in a in a dream kind of vision, and he sees that Nurudin Rahimullah has taken him by the hand, and he's entered him through Babu Salam. Babu Salam was the very you know door doorway where they they, you know, they would enter to come into the masjid, and that is the doorway you should come in to give the salam to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And as he entered, he saw that there was a kind of a great like, almost like a waterfall falling down and Rasulullah is there and the water is filling the whole of Medina and there are the ten Ashara Mubashara, ten people whom Rasulullah while he was alive he gave them good news of entering into Jannah. All ten of them he saw in his vision, all ten of them were lined up waiting to bathe under this water. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was at the front, then Sayyidina Umar, then Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Talha, and then all the different Ashram of Bashara were standing there. And then uh, Sayyidina, uh, our, our Shaykh Nuruddin Gurfi Rahimullah said to him, he said, you know, as he's taking him through towards the, towards the Prophet Sallallahu in his dream, in his vision, he says, do you want to bathe? And he said, yes, of course I want to bathe. And then he, he put him between Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar As Sayyidina, Umar is, as Sayyidina Abu Bakr is going forward, and Sayyidina Umar is right behind him, he falls in between. He says, I'm to the level of their, of their waist. And as I now get into the, into the water and as he's bathing, then he loses his, his, his you know, he's completely drenched in this, in this awe. Uh, and this inspiration that Allah Azza wa Jal is given, and then suddenly from there he's pulled out, and, and he wakes up, and he's at that place where, you know, in front of the road near the wall, he's he's there, um, you know, with his closed eyes. He just opens his eyes, and he realizes that this was an entire dream that he saw. But this was like a like a vision that Allah Azza wa Jal you know, showed him uh, while being in the company of our Sheikh Nuruddin Gorfi Rahimullah. <coughs> আমি 94 একবার এই যে সাইবান লাগি ট্রাই করছিলাম ফনসার দিছিলাম আমার মামুরগ্রামে তো অল সব থাকে 
আমার বিশ্বাস দিল না আমি আফিল করল আফিল কেনসেল করলো নাইনটি ফাইভ নাইনটি ফোর ডিসেম্বরের চোদ্দ তারিখ এরপরে আবার আমার আত্মাপুর মার সাথে দেখা করা করছে একটা বাচ্চা দিরা রায় বাড়ি ব্রাডফোর্ড তাকে এইটো এ বারিস্টার তো হে দেশও গেছে ছাত্র হলে গাছর তলে ভোট না ওর এই গাছর তলে থার বেড়া ও তার দেশ সে গিয়া তুমি আশা করলে কে আমার কথা দেখ যদি আমি লন্ডন ঢুকা কিছু শেখা উৎকা তুলিয়া দিয়া ঘর যান ঘরে ঢুকা আমরা পড়াইতাম কি না এই মাসাটা অনেক দিন বন্ধ আছে ষোল বছর বন্ধ আছে এই মাদ্রাসা ওর ফলে বিছানা আমার হইলা আউকা দেখি তাহাত কিয়া ফাইল দেখিয়া হইলা তাহাত যাই যদি দেয় বিচা আমি রিকুয়েস্ট করবো তে তো কইবি আমি ওসব হুজুরে হইলাম যে হুজুর আমি তো অনেক লন্ডন বিচা লাগি তাহাত যাই না তো হুজুর আমি দোয়া ফাইতাম নাইনটি ওয়ান আরবার উঠছি তাহলে কিতাব প্রস্তুত করবো কিতাব হইমু এটা ডর থাকে এদিন আমি গেছি গিয়ে আমি এম বেজি তামাইছি এম বেজি তামানির লগে লগে বুদ্ধ আমি হুজুর আমার ঘরে খাড়া তামানে যেখান কয় আমি রাগ করি আমার আজি কাজ তুমি লন্ডন ভালে যাইতাই হইলাম যে মদ্রাসার গোল মানাইতাম মসজিদ বানাইতাম হইতা দিব খে তোমার সম্মানত দিবা তোমার তুমি যে ইচ্ছা খেলে তারা হটাই যায় না খেলে তারা তো এই কাম লাগে না তার সত্যেও নিজের ডিউটি আছে এটা আল্লাহদা কাম আল্লাহদার ডিউটির মানুষের দরকার ও যাইতে হয় উঠে আজি কাছে কত টাকা লাগবো ঘর বানাইতে আমি উঠে কিন্তু বিশ লাখ টাকা লাগবো নাইনটি ফাইভর কথা হই না উঠে হয়েছে আমার যে অত টাকা সরস্বরী ঘর বানাইতে এখিতা লাগে দেশ তাকিয়া চান্দা উন্দা করিয়া আর কম খরচে ঘর এটা মানাই লোক ওই সময় আমার খুব গুসা উঠছে রাগ উঠছে রাগ উঠার লগে লগে এম্বেসির যে ঘর আমি আর তোলা দিয়া হই রাম এই যে তোরা এম্বেসির ঘর মার তো দুনিয়ার সামো লাগে মিলিয়ন মিলিয়ন ফাউন্ড তোর এখনো খরচ খরচ আর আমরা দুনিয়া আখের আত বেহেট তো যখন প্রশ্ন আমরা বিল্ডিংয়ের উপরে ওটা আমরা কম পয়সা মানাইতাম তোমরা বিভাস বিভাস নিয়োগটা তখন বাঙালি বেটি আছিল ইংলিশে দিকায় হংকেশ ধা আমি বুঝাই রাম কিতার আগ করে কিতার দেখায় হেগ্যখে দেব তোর হইতে মানে আখর ছিল যে ওই সময় আর আমি তো দেখি উজুর আমার ঘরে কেউ ডলাই তাম ওই সময় আমি আমার যে কে ইটার প্লানিং আছে নি মদর সার বলে আসে হুরজাতে হলটা গাছর তলে বড়ি গাছর তলে কথা দিছি দেখা হইল ফার্স্ট মিনিট ওয়াইট ফোর ঘুরে গেল আইয়ার হইল আপনি যে লন্ডনে থাকি যাই বানি বলে থাকার কোন প্রশ্ন নাই তিন মাসের বিজয় লিয়েছে কমিটির থাকে সিল মারি যেন আহিল He's talking about the first time that he applied, uh, the Sheikh Omar, right? He applied to come to this place. He's applied before, but it, it sort of you know, never worked out. And then he applied like in 1991, never worked out. In 1994, again, he made another application. And, you know, he, he was unsuccess, unsuccessful before to get to this country. But someone from Bradford, an individual, said, you know, Sheikh, we really need you to come over here. We've got this madrasa where students are you know, studying under a tree. And they haven't got a building, and we need to really build a building for them. There was actually a madrasa there, but the madrasa was closed for a very long time. And they appealed to the sheikh to come over. He could, he could raise some funds and, you know, from this country and take it back to Bangladesh. So as he's now you know, preparing to go to the embassy again for another interview, he goes to our sheikh, Nuduin Gurfi, rahimullah, and he requests for du'as, that I've made an application now to go to London. Could you please make du'a for me? So in 1994, in December, he says he goes to the embassy and when he goes there, he says he almost, he feels, he feels that Sheikh Nuruddin Gauri Rahimullah is right behind his back. And as he's being interviewed, as this Sheikh is being interviewed, he feels that, you know, because we know that Sheikh Nuruddin Gauri Rahimullah, he had this kind of a, an awe-inspiring character that he used to sometimes, you know, get angry, but in that he used to inspire awe in people. So he said that that overcame him. As he's speaking now, he's completely driven by the awe of the Sheikh and he's feeling that the Sheikh is right behind him. So when, when the person you know, in the, at the embassy asks him, well, why do you want to go to you know, England? Why do, you go, why, why, why do you want to go over there? He says, well, I want to you know, bring some funds back for a mother so that we have. 
He said, why do you want to, you know, why don't you just stay around in Bangladesh and raise your funds from over here? How much do you need? So he said, we need like 20 lakh, which is 20,000 pounds approximately. But at that time in the 1990s, it was a lot more sort of money. So he said, well, you can collect this money from within Bangladesh. Why do you need to go over there? So now he's getting very sort of angry and agitated by, by you know, them asking these questions because these questions are more or less to make him stay in Bangladesh and not give him his visa to come, out, come over here to England. So he said when he's continued to ask like this, he became angry and he then pointed his finger towards the, the building above. And he said, you guys have built this embassy here with millions and millions of taka and millions of pounds that you've spent over here building this for your dunya, for this world. And I want to do something for our dunya, our akhira, our next world, as well as try and, try and get these people to Jannah, as well as save them and secure them away from hellfire. And you, you guys, is this, is this the answer that you're giving me? So when the individual saw that he's getting angry, he, you know, there was a Bengali lady that was interviewing him and there was someone there speaking English. And he said, what is he getting angry about and why is he pointing his finger above there and, and pointing? So then she explained that this is the case. You know, he's saying that we spend all this money for this world, but he's going there for, for, for both the worlds. And this is the answer that, and reply that we're giving him. So then he said, okay, have you got any evidence of, of you know, the project that you're doing? What is it? Where, where are these students studying? So he took out the photographs to show the students studying under a tree. And the, and, and the individual there who's, who's looking at it gave him five minutes. And after five minutes, then he stamped and gave, gave him the visa to come over here to England. Sarapatam ninety five in London. Lamba history Marabba Gorivas to the Havala for Avore, Amar Shadivore, London Hotta, Am Shadima in China, Akosi London of the Tamnam. The Mudosa Samnaki London of Salah Lahul in the Sun. Our Oshome Ayami, Tinmas, Ehotin London Tassila, Amikunusoma Tinmas or Utakina. Tasila Mukarone, Anton Amara Talibu by Tan Babor Hodom Zitam, a Tangita Tan Hodo, Tanjola Zitam, where we love Naro Horsoi, with the roll away, Tamna Lagamar Hotano in our Balloy, Tanox Futaho. Ozamar, or not than a flight to Lamar Sukrovare, a Gorfuluzor of Flightillo Destakia, Ruibari. Also, my Amar fit to Fatto Dorahuli. Kidney. It's a blood food. The factor that I was here would work it up for a factor. I mean, then Oxford Gumaisi, a factor of the Nasu Ruise, also Babor, Tables of Malik Hadis, the Kalis of Sin and Buzam Nara, Tartables of Bestas in on Eastern Nongas. Taleman Horiko is I mean, what does it come now? Marosuki, you see, I'm a ticket for that in Bangladesh, only good for that. Hide what for the number of John Flight, I'm not doing that. I'm a friend. Kita, hello, you phone for like it. Time for another runner. I reckon time Behabu Tahurta. Our phone to see Amar Mamia Tarago Raslam, Taina Hirava. What but did just wait? I give Magnakitu is it out to me. Ulamar Rasuka, you say. I mean, is there a Marhole Morija Zudi? The best to the Imana do the whole time is in tiny. Is in Taina, I sent them a check it out. Don't call it. But Chalagitane, what is the Mugi? The Machavin de Kimon. I want Tarkunu Behabuami. Oh, who is he? A Mamina Hora, or John Yot Maduna. I want Badna Dilet, not Bad Dilailo to Hamiltona. What is he? A sober one in Balish with the other. Haligum Lux at the Gigor Hira Matula. And the আমার কিটো হইছে বা তোমার বলল যে আমার তো কিডনি ফ্যাক্টর হইছে আমি না কষ্ট হইরা ও খবর মানে আমার এক তদবিরি কই দিলা দেয়া হইলো আহান করো তা আলহামদুলিল্লাহ গুমতন উরছি আমি বুঝলাম যে আমার মনর দে দুর্বলতা এটা তো দূর হই গেছে কি স্বপ্ন হইতো আর আরম্ভ করলাম যখন হইতো না খান শুক্রবারে ফ্লাইট করে গেছিল সৌদি আরব রবিবারে হুজুর Shambhari noita shamae gya umme anitra ta chwali bishaj da karasikha kuru dhu mohi bhai yoi to. 
ওইসব আমার সাধিক সব বিস্তাত আর রামজানা ইউনিয়নের চেয়ারম্যান সফা চেয়ারম্যান এম পি ইলিয়াস আলী গাঙ্গুমার তারা আলিয়া ট্রলি হরে বই গেছেন তাই চেয়ারম্যান দেখেন চেয়ারম্যান এখানে হরাই লাই কিতাও তার ভাই কিতাও বুঝিয়া হরাই লাই হয় রাই মাতিও না গালিও না এখান খেয়ে থাকে বোলো গর ঘর যে লাগে থাকে গর ঘর যার হই আমি এখনও ভাইছি না আমি ভাইলো মো আসবো ইনশাল্লাহ তাকে এখন সিফাত পড়ে গেছি দুত চলা ফিরা হলেও কোনো জাক জমক কুন্তা নাই এমনি ফকির উল্লাহ দেশা খানো হলি চারটা কয়ো চলা চালি হরাই বই গেছে চেয়ারম্যান আর দুই মিনিট গেছে না জুরে উপস্থিত দাঁড়িয়া আমার দিকে না কিতাব ইসব কিতাব শুনলাম এই সময় তো টেলিফোন নাই ইলা টেলিফোনের সিস্টেম ওখানে এখানে সারা খুঁজে নিলাম সফনও খুঁজে নিলাম উঠি আমার খুঁজলা মক্কা চরি যতদিন তাকবাস দমজম খাই বাই আর মদিনা চরি গিয়ে হাজুর খাই বাই সব ডায়বেটিস নাই আমি খুঁজলাম রে দুই ক্লিনিকে বেমার বাট হয়ে গেছে দিয়ে ক্লিনিক ব্যবহার না করলে বেমার কমত নাই তো মক্কা চরি তো জমজম খাইছি বরমিন লগে লো আছে অকল সময় মদিনা চরি গেছি মানে আব্দুল্লাহ কিম সাহেব আমি তো লন্ডন জানে গেছি আর রুজু জ্যেষ্ঠ নাই ছয় মানে আব্দুল্লাহ কাম দশ দশ বছর আছে তাই না আমার লগে আসলা নয়জন মানুষ আমরা একলগে লন্ডন তানে বাংলাদেশ সহজ করে যাইতাম মন্দির আসলে কারণ ঘাটটি উঠি থা মানে আব্দুল্লিক সামনে হইল আপনি গড় সবক আমি রুম সবক আমি গিয়ে মার্কেটের খেজুর লইছি গিয়ে আদা খেজুর লইও খাওয়া শুরু করছি মানে আব্দুল্লিক হইলা অত বাধা হয়েছে নি ভেটো খাওয়া শুরু করছো কষ্ট হল কি হইলাম রুম যাইতায় নারে ভাই আমার একটা ওষুধ আলহামদুলিল্লাহ ও যে হাজুর খাইয়া কিডনির বেদনার ফাত্তর বেদনা ফাউর ইসলাম আজ পর্যন্ত আমি ওলা আছি So he's talking about 95 at the beginning he came over here to London for the first time he spent about 3 he spent about 3 months just over 3 months here and wherever he goes he says that I don't spend more than 3 uh, months uh, at, at at a place so then suddenly then he's now got an offer to go to Hajj so he's going to do the Hajj a badal of someone's father which is that his his father hasn't done a Hajj so he's going to do Hajj on his behalf and that person was going to do a Hajj So he said if I can do hajj with you it will be very nice because you know how to perform the hajj and you can do the hajj with my father and I will also perform our hajj. So he booked his ticket and everything everything was ready for him to go to hajj. But then just a couple of days before the actual hajj flight on a Friday Friday was his flight God for rahimullah is going on a Sunday from Bangladesh to hajj and he says just a couple of days before his flight all of a sudden he he has a stone in his kidney. And he said those individuals who have experienced the pain of having a stone in the kidney would know what kind of pain that is. So now he's he's unable to sort of sleep and he then calls the travel agent and tells him look cancel my ticket to go to uh, Hajj and book me a ticket to go straight to Bangladesh because I'm going to Bangladesh. And he's saying that look when a person is at the at the brink of the of you know, knowing that they might not live anymore the first thing that you want to do is to go and see your children and at least see them bid farewell to them and then pass away so he's phoning this travel agent and this travel agent is now telling him that what on an earth are you talking about there's two days left and you're about to go to hajj so he dropped the phone on him now this travel agent is not picking his you know he's not answering his call he's there trying to call him he can't so then you know he he's completely he's completely bewildered he doesn't know what to do and at that moment what happens is that he then drop you know he he then uh, drops off to sleep uh, somehow he goes to sleep and in his sleep he's saying that his his tears have actually wet the pillow beneath him and suddenly he sees nuruddin gorfi rahimahullah in his dream and sheikh, the sheikh says to him says what's the matter he says well sheikh you know i want to go to, i wanted to go to hajj but i've got a stone in my kidney and the sheikh said look do this read this so soon this is in his dream he sees that as soon as he wakes up he says my 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 mental weakness has completely gone and I now I've got a physical strength to myself he did what the sheikh told him to do he finds some kind of relief he goes over there to 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 Makkah al mukarramah and then he meets the sheikh there he said there's some details that he gives there I know the adhan is coming very closely so I have to shorten this so he then you know comes across to to the sheikh uh, in Makkah al mukarramah 
and the sheikh tells him, the sheikh, sheikh says to him, what's, I heard you were ill, what's the matter? Now he's saying that those days there was no phone connection that somebody could have you know, told the sheikh about this. And then he whispered to the sheikh here and told him that, look, this was, this, you know, I had a problem, I had a stone in my kidney. And then you know, I saw you in my dream and this is what, what happened, this is what you said. So Sheikh Nurdin Gorfu Rahmullah said to him that, look, while you're in Makkah, you should drink a lot of Zamzam water. And when you go to Medina, you should eat a lot of dates. So while he was in Makkah, he drank a lot of uh, Zamzam. And when he went to Medina, he says the first thing, he said, even though there were nine of them that traveled from the UK all the way to uh, Medina Munawwara throughout the whole of the Hajj, he says there was a Molana Abdullah, is it Abdul Hakim Abdul Hakim Abdul Hakim, Molana Abdul Hakim that was with him. And he said, let's, let's quickly go and find our bedding. And he said, before the bedding, anything, he went straight to the market, the, the date market. He bought himself half a kg of dates and he started to eat the dates. So Molana Abdul Hakim said, are you that desperate to eat? Are you that hungry? And so on. So, so he said, no, 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 my sheikh has told me that you know, there's something that I need to do that I need to drink a lot of Zamzam in Makkah and a lot of dates, eat a lot of dates in Medina and that's what I'm doing. So he says from that time till today, Alhamdulillah, he's never had that pain of the stones, you know, of the stones in his kidney, never had to do any operation or anything else. Alhamdulillah, through what the Shaykh has told him, he's been, he's, you know, Allah has given him the cure. Muhtaram, Amartim Fala Salah Hafizo Molana, God for the Addison. The number Salah, the hours of the world for the person. Therefore, I don't know the number. The recoup, my heart. No, 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 Amar kasih aja, kuya hamdon dos. Amar tu selain saya bilang orang betul. Om bila aku mau mau punya, betul kan? Di luar itu res isale sama kita. Jaga jaga Allah, jaga jaga Allah tuh mal kami. Om di luar itu khabar dia kehe guru guru aja. Soalnya mungkin barang guru guru tu leh macam ni buat kita. Di luar mau sakit. वो शाम से दिलाम वो फुके बिर गया तो ले इधर घर को ना फुके ले हम उस तो क्या ये तो क्या उधर तो कुछ लाभ हो मानुष बड़ी बोला ते हम उधर यहाँ आते जब आते हैं ना उधर कैसे भी बड़ा बोलता है एक बेटू मो हम तो ने बारे ये चीज़ गिरो सलाम वाले को जरा हमारे सामने सामने हमें तो उधर कुछ ही विश्व अंजाबरी तो ये सारा आस्था से भी जो दिवाल जाल की है, उन दिन और तब ये अपने आप बाहर निकल कर से हमारे तो हर सुबह जो तीन बजे लगे हो, ये जी, इस बार तो बड़ा गुप्त है, सर जाओ हमारे जवान हैं बस इस ही सेड दैट ही इस गोट थ्री सन्स एंड सिक्स डॉटर्स uh, his first son has graduated from the madrasa of our Sheikh Nuruddin Kofi Rahimullah. And the second one read up to, or studied up to the fifth, sort of Hidayah year, the year they study the book Hidayah. So, you know, his second son came to this country, he's in this country in, in Bradford. About three years ago, his son became ill. He became ill and he turned to his father and said, please dad, you know, make dua for me. His father made dua, you know, by uh, make a dua also for the, for his sort of um, his his own sheikh Rudin Godfrey Rahimullah and other shaykh in his silsila in his chain up to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi He made dua for them. And that night, his son saw a saw a dream. His son three years ago, this is saw a dream. In the dream, he saw Sheikh Rudin Godfrey Rahimullah. He's in in Godfrey. So he's now in Godfrey, in that place in Bangladesh where. Nuruddin Gauf Rahimullah used to sit and on Saturdays and on Tuesdays he used to have people coming to him just like you find moths that will completely surround a, a light in the night uh, the same way people used to come in their flocks to, to, to see him uh, and at that moment he went there he couldn't see Gauf Rahimullah he was in, in, a, in a room but after a while Gauf Rahimullah came out and then he hugged him and then in the dream 
Guru Nudun Guru Rahimullah, he started to, uh, you know, pun punch him all, you know, with, the, with, the, with the side of his, of his fist. He started to do this to him all over his body, in the dream. And the next day, he gets up and says to his father, he said, I saw a dream like this. In my dream, this is after, the, after Nuruddin Guru Rahimullah passed away. So Nuruddin Guru Rahimullah passed away in 2005. And we're talking about this incident it happened in 2016. So it's like eight, 11 years after his death. He said, I saw him in my dream and he sort of, you know, punched me like this all over. And he said, I've got no, I've got no illness now, I'm completely fine. And Allah Azza Az Az wa cured him from his illness. So it's in 1984 he had a heart attack and this is about, about uh, Sheikh Omar right here. He had a heart attack and for 22 nights he, he wasn't conscious at all. Uh, they took him uh, back to his home. His mother put something, you know, what we, we, we call a Goran Bangladesh, which is they make something and put it onto the head. So she put that on his head for after about three days then he gained consciousness. For 22 nights total, you know, he didn't know where he was. So then, Gurfur Rahimahullah, he came to visit him in his place. And when he saw him, you know, he said, Sheikh, I feel that uh, maybe I maybe have upset you or something. I saw this dream and I feel like your curse has, you know, you kind of have made a dua sort of against me. That's how I feel. So Gurfur Rahimahullah, he heard the dream and he said, no, no, it's not a dua against you. It was a dua for you in your favor. And you, in one moment, you have gathered many du'as. If you had spent many, many years worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, you wouldn't have got as close to Allah Azza wa Jal uh, than through the du'as that you received in this illness that you've gone through. So you would, you know, you, you basically you've received a lot and you've gained sort of you know, closest to Allah Azza wa Jal. So then he made preparation for the Sheikh to stay at his place uh, that night. Sheikh said, and he said that my, you know, he said that I, I don't, I didn't have any, any, any way of sort of uh, hosting the Sheikh properly because he never had proper, ha you know, a, pro pro a proper house that he can even call a house. Uh, he made arrangements for the Sheikh to stay on straw. Okay, so over there, you know, dried straw to to stay on there in a in a sort of tin sort of a house. So Sheikh slept there by. 2 or 2.30 in the night time, uh, the rain started to fall down and you know, he went straight away to that, to that house where the straw was because now Sheikh's obviously going to be wet. So when he went over there, he started to cry. Went to the Sheikh, Sheikh was already sitting down in his place. And he said, Sheikh, I've put you to a lot of difficulty by arranging for you this place. I don't have any other place to put you, you know, for the night. Uh, if I had something, you know, I've, I've got a, a great lack of wealth. 
we, we've got this little spa space here, but I've got a great lack of wealth. So the Sheikh said to him that, look, don't worry about it. I've made dua to Allah and Allah is going to completely turn your situation over. Meaning that he's going to give you affluency and he's going to give you wealth. And he said that those of you who've been to my place right now will have seen how the Sheikh's has, dua has come into my favor. Allah has given us the world in the system of the world. This is 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 the system of the yeah, yeah, to you the Buddha is a good thing. He talked to me about the Buddha. He said, I'm not going to be a good thing. I'm not going to be a good thing. I'm not going to be a good thing. A fall by law in Matosu or mention them, mention them. Allah in Nafil Josode, Muzrata, is a Saluhat Saluhan Josodu Kulu, or is a Fasada Fasada Josodu Kulu. Call Allah or Hia, call Paul Budin of Troya Sarabodin of Troy, call the Agatha Sarabodi. On a summer, go to a mountain in Hotamata, Huta, Maniana or Hotinit. They manage Bella Vargas. Are they manchena? Ask you a reason for the world. I didn't start with you. I'm not going to be a tongue with a ballo. Let's have it out. Some social reason she cooked for her. You're my size and a mask at room. I have a few shots at the whole. It about zero point of the moment. Now, for me, I'm not what I'm not. The Doctor Allah, when I heard them, they would get a kitalagi, Kamur, Eraman, Rudyamar Stado, Hilbert. I'm going to do Ustanda of Hilda Betong with the Bartos in a photo down by this. Utia Hilda, a woman from the Gayan. I'm to fund the no in Betong Kalita. Betong Kalitina, the Arab Darfuri Diva. If you don't get a little bit of 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 a little আমরা <laughs> আমরা <laughs> Oh, Saturday, go to the house of 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 if you don't like it, always say, You can't do the Korea with the Dahita. You can't do the Korea with 
So he's saying that uh, Allah Azza has two systems on the earth. One is according to the laws that we see and the things that we can understand. And there's another system Allah has that goes against science, that goes against all the things that, are, that, that we know to be acceptable. Uh, so one is according to the, to the natural laws that we see on the earth, according to nature, and the other one is against that. So things that are even our brains and our minds will not accept, Allah has, think, you know, Allah has ways to do things that are against nature, against the natural laws. Allah has power over both of them. Then he said that the awliya of Allah, when they say something, sometimes they are saying something which is to do with the second part, which is that it doesn't make sense to us, but if you do what the, what the wali of Allah has said, because he's talking from, he's talking from something which Allah Azza obviously has given him an understanding of, then you have made it. You have made it. Because they're not always talking about things that make sense to us. Sometimes they talk about things which don't even make sense, sense to us. He said, the only way you will reach this place is through doing the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Those people who do, ex who do a lot of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, then, then they, they manage to cleanse their heart. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that there is a morsel of flesh inside the body once that it is rectified and the whole body is rectified, once that is corrupted and the whole body is corrupted. And that is the heart. So he's saying that excessive dhikr is the very means to reaching this maqam and this rank with Allah Azza wa Jal that you begin to understand certain things that Allah is going to do which doesn't make sense to other people but you understand it. So he's saying that in the madrasa he used to teach himself in the madrasa of Gurfi Rahmanullah's madrasa he used to teach there and the teachers were speaking that you know a lot of the prices in the bazaar have gone up and we need to raise our salaries. So who's going to have that courage to go to the Shaykh Nurdin Rahimullah and say that we, we want our salaries to be raised. Who's going to have the courage? In fact, in that madrasa, four, out of 44 different students, 40 of them were the students of Mona Nurdin Gurhi Rahimullah. So they, they wouldn't even have a tongue to speak in front of the Shaykh. There's only sort of four of them that would have a way of at least saying something. So they took, you know, Shaykh Nur Islam, uh, who's on my right here, they took him with, with, with them and they went in front of Shaykh and they said, Shaykh, you know, he, he said, Shaykh, uh, those, the, the teachers are saying that the salaries need to be raised a little bit because the prices in the marketplace have gone up. So Shaykh, you know, he had this way of speaking. He said that, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Are you guys still after a salary? Are you here for a salary? He said, those of you that will leave the salary and will abandon the salary, Allah will open the door for them. Now, that is something which he's now saying to us, he's saying that which one of us, our minds is going to accept that, that if you were to abandon the salary and not even take it, then Allah is going to open, open his doors towards you, you know, open your sustenance towards you. At that moment, he was saying that I used to have two and a half thousand taka, which is literally uh, like 25 pounds. He said that I used to have like two and a half thousand taka as my salary. His own students were in other places they were getting 8,000 as a salary, 9,000 as a salary in other places, whereas he stayed in Gorfu. Now he said, why don't people leave? Why, why don't they actually leave uh, Gorfu? Why don't, why don't they go to other places? If the salary is so low, other places where your own, own students are getting more of a salary than you, why wouldn't you want to leave this place and go to other places? He's saying that it is only because of the name Gorfu that when people would hear that this teacher teaches in Gorfu, or this student, you know, he's a bad student, but he's in good food. No, no one's going to say bad anymore. No one's going to attribute anything negative towards this person because of the place that you're in. You know, Sheikh had this, had this, um, this dignity in, in, in Silet and in Bangladesh that once people knew that you are from Gorfur and you're teaching there, you're studying there, then you had an, you had an extra uh, sort of respect. So then he says that, I, you know, he said that straight away he made the intention that I've only got two and a half thousand taka that I take. That's all he used to get. He said, from today on, I'm going to abandon it. Straight away, he made that intention. He said, when Gorfur Rahmullah passed away, 
he said there was 14 months of salary that was still due to him to other teachers 14 months still due and their salary was only two and a half thousand taka and he says that if i now tell you because of me abandoning the salary that i used to get what allah has opened for me then robbers will be after me okay that's how much allah has, has opened for him
বাহির করা দুষ্ট হল গাছে গাছে মানছে না মানছে না আমার দাওয়াত দিলাম আমার মহারাজা যদি গরফুর মধ্যে ভিজিট করবায় আর আত্মাপুর মধ্যে ভিজিট করবায় মহিরা মাসা ভিজিট করবায় মহিরা মাসা চালু করছি বহারিগ্রাম ভরাইতাম আমি বুঝে চাইছি এখন সবাও দিয়েছে তারা মাসা আমার দুই সাকের দ্বারা গরফুর ব্যবস্থা তাদের বহারে সানি পড়ায় এখন বহারে সানি সবক দিয়া গেছেন কি দুই দিন বাদে আমি খাবে দেখি গরু রোজ আসে বহারে পড়ে তার মহিরা মাস এর বাদে আমি বহারি ভরাই না সানি আর অবস্থা দিয়ে মনে হয় অবস্থা যায় না লাগে দিন আর শরীর তো বড় বেশি এটা এক গোসম তাই গোসা করে সব তাহলে বাড়ি গেছে আমি ভরাই বহারি আর তোমরা গোসম তখন দেখা যায় গোসম নাই ইয়াক ফুলি থামানা নাম হবি করতে পারি দৌড়া ভরে বহারি ভরে শরীর অসুস্থ গুমর ঠন্ডা হয়েছে আর ওগুলো আরো মানুষের ক্ষতি গেছে বহারি বুজুর্গ দুর্গানের দিন আচরণ সামনে রান্না কোনো মানুষের জিন্দেগি করতে পারবে না যে জিন্দেগি জানা থাকতো So he's talking about uh, before, a <coughs> long time back when he, you know, he's got one brother and they were in another place before they moved to a new place in 1984, uh, a place where he then settled down, he made his home there. And what he did is that he planted, you know, what, what he used to love is, he used to love trees and in particular he used to love coconut trees. So what he did is he planted three different coconut trees in, in, in separate places and these were for his three sons. So he thought when they you know, grow up they'll get their pieces of land by knowing that the cocoa trees are over here. So once he built his new place, he called Gurfur, uh, uh, um, Nuruddin Gurfur Rahimahullah, uh, Sheikh to come here for one night and to spend one night at his place. So when the Sheikh came, the Sheikh spent a night there And then the next day he saw the, you know, he, basically he wanted to dig a whole pond there, like we dig ponds over there and, you know, put, put sort of water there. Sheikh came out and he said, you know, he looked at the trees and said, why have, you, why have you put the trees in this order here? Why have you planted them there? And he said, Sheikh, please make dua. You know, these, one of these trees is not giving, not giving any coconut. I've, I've, I've planted it, but it's not giving any coconut. He said, which one is that? So he said, this one here. So Sheikh took his stick. He hit the bottom of the, of the tree and he said, why don't you give any coconuts? This is the sheikh addressing the tree, hits the tree and says, why don't you give uh, coconuts? So then he says, you know, subhanAllah, he says, after that, to this day, you want to go and see the coconuts that this particular tree bears. He said his own son took um, Sheikh Ahmed Ali from Bradford to Bangladesh and he made, uh, you know, he, he slept at the Sheikh's place and the Sheikh told him the story uh, by night and after Fajr he took him there to, to that tree and he showed him the tree and he said, look, are there enough, you know, is this coconut tree giving enough coconuts? And he was full of coconuts and he said, SubhanAllah, I don't know whether I've come over here to this place in Bangladesh or some place of Jannah, I don't know, because these are the sort of karamat of, of, of the awliya and he's saying that, that when a person has filled their mouth with a lot of dhikr and they're always continuously doing dhikr and they're remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, then when they say something, then Allah Azza wa Jal makes that thing to be. Even in a hadith of a Muslim, you know, there, there, there's a hadith that says, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this part by the way, this little part just to give uh, a reference to what the Sheikh said, that there's a hadith that says, Law aqsama ala Allahi la abarra, that if such, such people were to say, Wallahi, then Allah will make that thing come true because they are so close to Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah loves them so much that He would make them, you know, make, make such things come true. So these are the awliya of Allah when they, when they, you know, they fill them, their lives and especially their mouths with zikr, that when they said something, then Allah Azza wa Jalla made it, made it happen so. And then it's talking about a particular madrasa where, you know, the, 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 there are girls there that are studying and, uh, 
one of them sees that <coughs> now he sees that that Nurdin Qutb rahimahullah he's in a, in a dream and he's he's teaching there and then he leaves now why did he leave he's saying that there were certain students there that were not paying attention to to the dars or to the lesson of Bukhari and they even sort of watching TV and so on so he's saying that 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 is one thing but there was one girl there Tamanna who was there who was in the dars of Bukhari she's she's there she kind of falls asleep next to the person uh, you know, next to her, she sees Allah's Messenger وسلم, in a dream and he says to her that you're going to be better, your illness is going to go. Okay? So he's saying that there are certain individuals that once they, you know, once you make yourself to who you're supposed to be, then Allah Azzawajal will make these things you know, happen. <coughs> ইমান <laughs> আর <laughs> মানে <laughs> আমরা <laughs> দেখা <laughs> পড়াইছি <laughs> তোমার <laughs> <laughs> রব্বানি সাহেব আর উনাময় রব্বানি সাংবাদ করে ওরা এক বংশ দেখায় ইনো বেশি করতে হয় না 
বংশম দেবতা আছে তা মানি নি যায় যদি মানি লও সেই দর্শন বইতে হবে মাননাতে ভাবি ভাগরে দিয়ে যায় গর্ভে রূপাতেও দর্শন মানি So he's, he's talking about his own health and he's saying that, you know, he's had, uh, you know, in 1984 he had a heart attack, he was unconscious for uh, 22 days, he already told us this. Uh, and by 2003 he had diabetes and he's had a number of um, illnesses and what happens is by 2011, so this is like six years after Mona Nuruddin Gurdur Rahimullah, he passes away. So in 2011, he has, uh, you know, he, he gets up in the night and he wants to pray his tahajjud. He goes and does his wudu and as he's doing his wudu, he feels a shiver and he knows that he's not well. He goes back to, back to his place to sleep and then he's unconscious for three hours. And his sons are looking after him. Uh, and then when he gets to when Fajr time, he prays his Fajr. Straight away, they took him to a heart uh, foundation or hospital and when he went over there the doctor examined him the doctor who knows him the doctor examined him and said look there's no way I'm, you're going to leave this place without me doing a bypass because when I've done the examination I've seen that you've got five different blocks you know one of them is like 80 percent another one is like 70 percent another one is sort of 60 percent and so on like that you've got five different blocks in your heart there's no way of putting a ring in your heart. We have to do a bypass of operation. So straight away, Sheikh said that, I said to myself, there's no way I'm going to go through a bypass. Uh, and he said that, Ayyub salam, which we know, a prophet of Allah mentioned the Quran, when he became ill, he said, he said a dua, Rabbi anni masani durru wa anta rahimin. My Lord, affliction has befallen me. Uh, while you are the most merciful of those who have mercy. And this is a dua, he said that, Oh Allah, you know, you made him ill for 18 years, but you gave him that dua. And through that dua, he got his relief. Uh, but you placed that dua in the Quran for us, for people like us. So he said that, I, I said, I'm going to read this about 500 times. So he read that in a dua over and over again. And he says a few days later, he saw Gurfu, rahimahullah, in his dream. So in his dream, he sees that he's gone to Gofu, he's gone to that place, and he sees, you know, uh, the sheikh is on the second floor, and the sheikh says to him that it's time for Dhuhr Salah, let's get together and let's do a Jama'ah prayer, praying congregation. So he said, as you go through, Rahman said to him, look, I, I don't want to lead the prayer, you lead the prayer. Uh, and, and sheikh to my right says, well, but, you know, he says that I haven't got wudu, so I need to do wudu. So he comes down and he goes and does his wudu. When he's done his wudu, he turns around, and he sees Sheikh Nuruddin Gurdur Rahimullah sitting on the staircase with something in his hand, like a little container in his hand. There's something yellow inside. It looks like Rasmalai, something really yellow inside. He said, come over here. He says, Sheikh, what is it? He says, come over here. And then he gives him that drink and he makes him drink it. He says, I can't describe the sweetness of this drink. And he says, Sheikh, what is this? And Sheikh says to him, this is a syrup from Jannah. And, 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 and I've given it to you to drink it. So, when Sheikh gave him that to drink, he wakes up. He goes, that was in 2011. I had five blockages in my heart. Now we were obviously in 2019. He says, have I had a bypass? I haven't had a bypass. Allah. Allah. So he said, these are the awliya of Allah. These are the people. He said, when you go to their gatherings, you know, you will see sometimes that they are making certain motions and certain things that might not make sense to you. If you can bear that and stay there, then you know you've made it but if you can't then you'll get a slap and you'll be out out of that place and said so that's what sheikh you know Mulan Nuruddin Gurfi rahimullah he was that he was that kind of person that he had certain things that you wouldn't understand uh, but if you were managed to stay in them and he, and he spoke specifically about these buzuls and he said about you know that the, the, there's a science of spirituality there's certain people who don't believe in this uh, and Allah Azza wa has kept certain people who have you know, who have made themselves of this, of this nature, that they're close to Allah, but we can't always understand them. But to get close to, you know, to, 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 to be with them, and, and to be like them, and to emulate them, and to follow them in every way, is a way to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, and these are the people who are of that kind.
Mahtaram Hazirin, Kota Varek Lamba, Gorfi Ramutur, Laib Vayam Kurti, Isai Paskun Tarutamai. Ami, Bisheshkari, Umkota Hanara Rekhon, Sijetun Mazhe Tien Khala Manus, Agor Dukor Tien Khala Andar Vesai Bola Mala. Ek Kala Bihal Hafshu, Ek Kala Kambara, Abdullah Numara Diyala Tala Nubunam, Ar Ek Kala Lukman Hekim, बाला में अगर दुबार तीन खाला अंदर में से बोला बाला सिलेटर मार्फी तीन खाला अंदर में से बोला बाला एक खाला बाइंग पुरी एक खाला गोल पुरी एक खाला हमरा अब्दुल्ला तेरा रिश्तेरी इतना समय इतना है हम शेष खाता हो खाता हो जाओ जब दिन गोल पुरी रहमत तो नहीं थी खाल बोले ये मंदर को नू कॉफी खाला ह एक मंजर जगता इजा मानुष इजिन बिफाना बेउस आकोन या नज़ा बढ़ता हूँ जनों ये वहाँ तो हमें चेंजा तब किसी मानुष या नज़ा कर से फूंक मुक्का किसी कर से होशी मुक्का अतः दे दे अवस्था ऐसी दो किन मुक्का इजे होशी मुक्का इजे वर्षे ना दो किन मुक्का जाना था दो किन मुक्का कैसे होशी मुक्का इजे वर्ष हमारा दावा नफ़ुन दावा पेड़ारे कोई हर पेड़ारे हम चले नाश्ते जाओ नमाज़ फ़र्ज़ चले ये वो हम कहाँ भी किसी के साथ नहीं हमारे पर एक तरह से कैसे निकाल मार्ग ही मार्ग लाशों में उठा लाता है वो हम का और हम शरीर में जा सोने सोते थे एक बुढ़िया हमें कोई नहीं रे इतना चेस को त्वाजी किया था लेकिन फागलों को नुवा तो आना ही वर वर इंतजारे साला बांग्लादेश से फागलों मस्जिद में दरासा है खंदे खंदे मुसल्लाए गुनगुना आवाज़ है खंदे इल्ले के टीपम का अभी शोखा देखा ही बाबी दरताए अफसोस है ने Chakera mahu masih ragun guna naga, nama madur gorkur balagan stana, Madinah rauda sam rauda Madinah, awni sunai wa Allah, hatta salam sura sura gorkur, awni sunai wa Allah, hatta salam sura. हज़ी दुष्ट उधर को अल्लाह वाले इंतकाल दहाई दिशे साला दुनिया रे हिंदू वाले तमसो संपर्क के मतों प्रकाश कर से दुश्मन दुष्ट छोड़ तो अलिया मासन तो फरीक का दिन मासा फरीक का बंद तो करी गर्व करी जाना था कुछ अल्लाह पक्कर कर दिया रे आलम में उधर अब तो जाने बुलाऊं खरो अब उधर इधरा माया करे तो तो दिन दिन जा दिन जा तब वो थारा तो जा रहा है बुलाऊं खरो so his sort of final words, and he's saying that in the past there's been sort of three individuals that Allah gave dark skins to, and they were very blessed uh, in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. And three individuals that have dark, dark skins in Bangladesh, and they have also been blessed in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. So in the past we've had Bilal al Habshi radiallahu anhu, who was Sahabi, he was very blessed. Tambara, who was the, uh, the, the student of um, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, he was very blessed. And also Luqman al-Hakim, who also had a dark skin, he was blessed. And in Bangladesh, we have uh, Bayanpuri, rahimahullah, we have Gorfuri, rahimahullah, Hamur Abdullah. Hamur Abdullah, who was another, another uh, wali of Allah in Bangladesh. These were very sort of blessed individuals. When the Shaykh spoke about the janaza uh, of, of Shaykh Nuruddin Gurfu Rahimullah on that day, you know, Bangladesh hasn't sort of seen such a janaza where people came, they came in such crowds that they never even had space to even turn around in the right direction to do the janaza. That's, that's how, how many people came together um, in, the, in the hundreds and thousands that came together. Uh, and, and the Sheikh read some, some poems, some poetry, 
in, in, in favor of Shaykh Nuruddin Rahimullah, of how much of a blessed individual he was and how much they miss you know, his, his presence. Uh, and these are the people whom Allah has you know, sort of blessed. Uh, he has set, set some poetry. I, I haven't got the, uh, the, the, the thing to translate those poetry, but a very emotional poetry to say how much they are sort of missing him, how much you know, they miss his sort of uh, his voice and when he used to uh, recite the hadith and used to read the hadith in the madrasa and so on. Uh, and Bangladesh will truly miss you know, such, such individuals uh, that that Sheikh um, is, is, you know, Sheikh has described today. Uh, Subhanallah. I just remember another so the Sheikh. Sheikh has concluded his 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 bayan, and he has said, "May Allah Azza wa Jalla raise the ranks of Sheikh Nuruddin Qutb Rahimullah." I just remembered another incident in 1999. A lot of you might have remembered that there was a an outbreak of a fire in Hajj, uh, and that Hajj uh, in in that Hajj many tents were burnt. And after that, the Hajj ministry then started to make fireproof tents in Mina. Okay, so that was the fire of 1999. In that particular Hajj, Mona Nuruddin Godfrey Rahimullah, Shaykh Nuruddin Godfrey Rahimullah, he was there in that Hajj. And how the fire started was apparently there was someone making some tea, some woman was making some tea, and um, I think the kettle sort of got knocked over and, and the stove. And then from there, fire caught onto the tent, and from one tent to another tent, it just spread like wildfire. And Sheikh Nuruddin goes, Rahmullah, he was in a particular tent. So the fire's coming, and there's people that are running like crazy, and they're announcing as they're running, like, get out, get out, leave everything, get out. You know, the fire's coming, you're going to burn. So these are from witnesses of people who are actually there with the Sheikh. Sheikh said he was in the tent. I know those tents are big, you can fit about a good 60 people in those tents. So Sheikh said, he said, nobody leave the tent. He said, nobody leave the tent, the fire is not going to burn the tent. Now, they say out of the 60 people, 53 of them left. They thought, we're not going to, you know, forget this, we're not going to um, wait to see whether it's true or not. 53 of them left. Seven of them were there, Sheikh included. There's, they say about seven individuals something with the sheikh that were there in the tent. And the sheikh went straight into sajda. Straight went to the sajda and he stayed in sajda. They say the fire came all the way up to the tent. It burnt all the tents around them, but it never burnt their tent. And sheikh then got up from the sujood once the announcement was made that the fire has, has been extinguished. Then sheikh came up from sujood. Um, so, this is an incident that people actually witness. In fact, I remember, I've actually met people in Bangladesh who've told me this. I've met people in Bangladesh who've told me this. So there are still people alive in Bangladesh that will tell you, to tell you this in Bangladesh, you can go and meet them. Where his bayan sort of in Silet is there, is going to end at 8 p.m. And on the same day, his bayan is there at 8 p.m. same day, same time in Dhaka. So you can imagine that to get from Sira to Dhaka it will take you about four hours by car. To get the minimum will take about four hours by car. They say that, you know, it's impossible. How can you have the Sheikh finish his ban here at 8 p.m. and then be ready for his next ban in Dhaka at 8 p.m.? And this is not once this has happened. They say that it's happened several times. And what happens is the Sheikh finishes his bayan in Silat, he gets off stage, nobody knows where he's gone. He just got off stage, nobody knows where he's gone. And they say in Dhaka, and the place where he's supposed to give the bayan, there is a heavy storm there, and Sheikh appears on stage at 8 p.m., not a single hair is wet. And this is how Allah Azzawajal obviously, you know, for these people, Tayyul Ar, it's called Tayyul Ar, which Allah Azzawajal, you know, makes the earth, you know, he shrinks the earth for them where you know, they make dua to Allah Azza and Allah Azza facilitates it for them. I'm going to say another one that I've met people who've told me this. They say that some of his students have said this, uh, that Sheikh is with like four of his students. Sheikh Nuruddin Qurfi Rahimullah is with four of his students. And he's, and he's got to go very far. This is, this is like some like a hundred kilometers or something, he's got to go far. Now, the, the students are asking Sheikh, are we going to take a, you know, a, a you know, a, a ride with a car or something to go there. He goes, Matina, 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 Matina. He goes, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. 
Dekhi dekhi Allah kita khurun. Let me see what Allah does. Let me see what Allah does. And then he goes, Amar Adro, Amar Adro, Amar Adro. He goes, Hold my hand, hold my hand. So all four of them hold his hand. He goes, Bala hold it. He goes, Hold it very tight. He says, Hold his hands. He goes, Khel so cool you now. He says, Nobody open your eyes. Nobody open your eyes. Just walk with me, walk with me. So he's walking with them. He's holding their hands. He says, Khel so cool you now. So say you cool, say you cool. Don't open your eyes. Don't you dare open your eyes. He goes, and he goes, walk with me, walk with me. As he walks, a good few steps. He goes, dekhi, 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 Allah, dekhi, dekhi, Allah, to dekha, 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 anil cha, anil cha, Allah, dekha, dekha, anil cha, anil cha, zagat anil cha. Because I can see that Allah's borders to that place, Allah's borders. They open their eyes, and they, they've traveled a good hundred kilometers in a few seconds. So these are number of reports that you can find in Bangladesh where Sheikh Nuddin Gurdur Rahimullah has had, you know, a lot of influence over the, lot of influence. Um, over the people and there are hundreds of people that could tell you about the many karamat that 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 sheikh has has you know uh, had in, in Bangladesh and how he also has helped so many people you know in Bangladesh in fact uh, I'll share something with you in um, when he used to come to this country uh, I've hosted him once but when he used to come to this country people used to you know want him to stay in their house uh, and Sheikh used to come here, he had a mother's office in Bangladesh and he used to announce like, he said that look, I've got, I'm here for 30 days and I want to raise 30 lakh taha. I'm here for 30 days and I want to raise like 30,000 pounds for my mother's over there and whoever's going to take me to their house, they're going to give like one lakh, they're going to give 1,000 for the mother's, that's it. 30 nights, he stays in 30 houses and you know people are ready to give that and why are people ready to give that let me tell you why people here will tell you there's people in Luton who've told me this people in Bangladesh have told me this that whoever's place Sheikh stays one night if they had any problems with jinns in that house with anybody in that house it's gone it's finished just by him staying there one night in that house so these, these are people who've told me directly whether in Luton, people have told me, and also in Bangladesh. That whoever, whoever's place he stays in for a night, if there's been any gin problems with anyone or with the house, and that's completely gone by the Sheikh just spending one night in that place. So may Allah Azza wa Jal bless, bless him, may Allah Azza wa Jal bless his grave, bless his place in the Akhirah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us continuously receive the, the Anwar and the, and, the, and the many different uh, you know, illumination that Allah gives through His close people uh, on the earth. May Allah Azza wa Jal also bless the, the, the you know, she Sheikh Nur Islam, who's on my right here. May Allah bless his life and, and give him more barakah in his life. I'm going to now request the Sheikh makes dua and then we can do the next message. <laughs> وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا الله ما لا تمام خطاء الخسر وقدر المدر أمين أمين أعمال صالحة توفيق يا الله مرا كابرين كي درجات تر بلان فرق يا الله مرا مريضو كو كامل شفا نصيب تر حاجات مندو كي حاجات کا روا فرق بفانا كو فانا ينايت فرق يا الله هم جب طلق دندار رهي تر حبيب كي قدم با قدم چلنا كي توفيق رهي همارا خاطر و ايمار كو نصيب اور آخرات میں آپ کے حبیب کے ساتھ اور آپ کے حبیب کے شفاعت اور ہمیں جنت نصیب کرنا وصلو اللہ تعالی علی خیر خلقی محمد وآلہ وصحبہ اجمعین برحمتکا یا رحمت